differently interesting extra time communion for minicab drivers. Take the money and sit back down again. Breastfeeding mums. Oh, you've not been giving it its breakfast again, have you? And people disturbed by urban foxes engaged in the act of lovemaking behind their bins. Anybody there? The two mics. Overworked, overweight, overpaid, overnight. On Talk Sport. Welcome to a sparkling new podcast from Mike Parry and Mike Graham. We're the two mics. Actually, it sounds even better when you do it Dullsville, because when you try to be happy and excited and energetic, you sound pathetic. <laughs> it was an epileptic dog. <laughs> now, you don't call my people idiotic, right? They're your not people. idiots. Are they no. your people, though? Oh, they are, yeah, my followers, <laughs> my, my tribe. We'll soon have wars. We'll have, we'll have gangs of dogs against gangs of foxes <laughs> in urban wars. We will. We will. It's like some kind of we will. dystopian nightmare. This is TalkSport Extra Time. I'm Mike Graham. Mike Parry is here, and it's time to say a very, very good morning uh, to the Porkmeister. Very good morning to you, Mr Parry. Yeah, very good morning to you, Mike. Eagerly anticipating the outcome of yes. last night's competition. Well, I'll tell you what. The vote. I'll tell you what, and there's never been a more exciting winners and losers. I mean, last week I thought that the numbers were extraordinary. I think yeah. you won by something like 187 to 120 or something like that. Yeah. Yesterday, uh, all the way up until midnight when the count ended, mm. right, uh, it was literally no more than four or five apart the whole day through. You know, and, it went, and and it ended, I'm sorry to tell you, 207 to me, 204 to you. Rubbish. It did. Rubbish. That it's, must be gerrymandered. I was, I was easily the big favourite there. And by the way... No, you can look all the way through the day and no. you can see that it was never but more than four or five apart. You didn't tell me how uh, the mechanics of voting went. What do you mean? Well, all I did today was I just put out um, a message to, to our followers on Twitter yeah. saying... Uh, if you favoured me last night, yeah, favourite, put yeah. favourite. Yeah. If you thought uh, put uh, retweet. That's okay. Right. That's how it. That's how it works. Yeah, but ha- hang on. Then I got some people come back saying, "What do you mean? Do we just what do we favour and what do we retweet?" Well, have you got followers who are complete dunces or something? No, no, no. Well, they don't know what to do. No, no. Well, what they favourite or retweet is what I put out at three thirty yesterday morning, right? Which says uh, retweet for Mike Graham and favourite for Mike Parry. Yeah, hashtag but... winners and losers. So they go there yeah. and they either favourite that or they retweet it. But they have to put the hashtag winners or losers in. Do no, they? they don't have to no, they just that's why the, the total tally of people that means that 511 people, yeah, uh, 411 people rather went on and yeah. either favorited or retweeted that particular tweet. Yes, but and that's you see, that's, you go. but you see, I didn't refer them to that particular tweet. Well, I mean, you what don't have did to... that particular tweet say? Well, the, I've just read it to you. It says retweet for uh, IROMG or yeah. favorite for Mike Parry eight. Yeah, hashtag. But I, and I didn't ask them to go back to that tweet. I thought they just had to sort of get on to like you know something which says Mike Parry and then just. Well, I'm not it. responsible for your complete inability no, to understand no, Twitter. No, you didn't tell me last night what the rules well, were. I, didn't, I reckon I didn't I've tell got you two put... or three times I as many voters as you. Well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't tell you to put one foot in front of the other before you walked in the studio either. But that doesn't mean. I should. I wasn't able to advise uh, my followers well, who, frankly, who are a very loyal I mean, band. To be honest, you shouldn't be doing that anyway. I mean, I right. don't do that. I don't urge right. people to vote for me. Why not? Because that's not the way it, the, the gentlemen uh, progress them. I'm, the, the, I, I, there's you're nothing, not a gentleman, you were about no, to say. No, 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 I wasn't. I was going to say, there's nothing gentlemanly about um, having to combat the gerrymandering philosophy why can't, which you why can't employ you just for do, most of your life. Why can't you just do what I did last week, which was when you won, I said, congratulations, Mike, very well done. Because I don't think you're a, I don't think you're a True winner. I think you're a cheating oath, <laughs> and, uh, well, and and I think I, I can... think I think most of our listeners know that as well. well. I don't think they do actually, because 207 to 204 is no, a very narrow no. victory, but it's a victory nonetheless. Because my followers it allows me to form it allows me to form a majority uh, in the uh, parliament of the two mics. My followers weren't aware of what they were voting on. They just pressed favourite here and, and well, that I'm sort of thing. I'm not responsible for the idiocy of your followers. No, no, they, no. You don't call my people idiotic, right? They're your not people. Idiots. Are they no. your people? Now, well, they are, right? Yeah, my followers, <laughs> my my tribe. They're uh, your tribe. You know, yeah, my tribe. It's the Mike Parry tribe. That's right, absolutely. Brilliant. They're not uh, they're not dumbbells, man. They, they all know live, what they're they, they all live in penthouses. But they've all I, got a locked room. And I, they've all got a twenty six and a half inch inside leg. I, have they? When I, when I um, when I went uh, home last night, you forgot to tell me what the mechanics of it were, so I wasn't able well, to update. Uh, to be honest, um, to be honest, every week I the porky to, tribe every, on how they did it. Every week I explain to you how it works, and every week you want to make mm. it so that mm. you can win it, right? And no. so far you've won it once, and I've won it now five times. It's five one to me. Yeah, well, I'm I'm sorry, but I mean. It's like Liverpool I, Stoke at half time. I find that very difficult to believe. Um, anyway, thank you very much for your kind words, and uh, you'll have another opportunity to win yes, next week. Yes. I mean, you know, it is entirely possible that people just liked my winners and okay, losers okay, better than yours. Okay. 
Shall we just talk about, you know, what we contribute to the well-being and the lives of uh, of the people who listen to this show? Because, yes. of course, tonight I'm going to be helping everybody out with Ask Porky. Of course. You don't offer any sort of guidance and, and care and concern to our listeners I like do. I do. I do. Therefore, well, I, they I like me better than they like you. Well, if that's important to you, then You're I'm You're a mean-faced mongrel. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm the man who seemed to be, you know, the height of compassion well, around listen, here. if you are... As, as, benevolent, as, I am, benevolent. If, if you are, as I believe you to be, mm. you know, craving popularity, which I is don't what crave you do... I popularity. And, ...and wanting to be, you know, the guy that everybody likes, then mm. that's fine. I don't, mm. I don't mind being the villain of the piece. Mm. You know, I know that there are plenty of people out there that like me, but I don't, you if know, I, I don't crave their popularity. If I was a dictator, I'd be known as the benevolent dictator... Would you? Because... Yeah, all I do is try and improve people's lives. Yeah, That's I what I've spent most of my life doing. Yeah, but the trouble is a lot of people mm. don't want their lives improved. Well, certainly not improved in the way that you want to improve them. Well, some people don't know that they need their lives improving. That's no, the point. Exactly. That's what a benevolent dictator does. And, that's, to, and that's, how they all, that's how they all start. And then before yeah. you know what's going on, yeah. you're putting people up against the wall and shooting them yeah. for disagreeing with yeah, you. Yeah, not at all. Anyway, I'm sorry uh, you're so upset about it. Well, I'm not upset about it. I just, I just know how these things work. Um, now, I have to say, mm. I have to say that the old um, kaleidoscope, which yeah. is... Uh, the end of season football machinery yes. is going to become very complicated. Yes. Particularly, I should say that while you were uh, explaining that, you were in fact making the, the shape yeah, the with your hands of a kaleidoscope. Do you never have a kaleidoscope? Did you never have a kaleidoscope? I did. I used to love. Yeah, I love kaleidoscope. Fantastic looking in fact, through it like that. In fact, I, mean? I think uh, mm. I think I made mm. one actually at did one you? point. Yeah, that would be quite good yeah. because um, you've got to remember that what happened was it was uh, like a signal to me as a child where my future would lie. And these days, Not when you look through the kaleidoscope, yeah, because these days the only thing I look through like this now with one eye yeah. is guess what? I don't know. Tell us. A telescope because Why I do you look through a telescope. I like to imitate Lord Nelson do you? because I live down in uh, Portsmouth right. and I can see victory from my balcony. Would you like me to shoot you? No, 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 <laughs> no, thank you. You know what happened, don't you? The bullet went in through his um, side of his uh, body, yeah, um, shattered his spine, mm. bounced up and came up behind his ear, but nicked a bit of his brain, all that right. kind of stuff. He, he, he never had a chance. But so, that's... so that's where they have this kind what? of great quandary about what was actually said. You know that famous painting of him lying on the deck? Oh, yes, right? yes, Kiss um, Me whether, Hardy. Whether he said Kiss Me Hardy yeah. or whether he said Kismet It was Hardy. Kismet Hardy. Kismet Hardy, yeah. yeah. Kismet, it's like, uh, that's like... Um, it's like saying that's life, Karma. It? It's yeah, like, yeah that, that's, that's the way Kismet it goes. Hardy. But surely Karma. if half his brain had been blown away, he wouldn't have been able to speak, would Well, he? he was just about able to speak. He was mm. the bravest man you've ever uh, come across because mm. he strode the deck in the middle of a heated battle. Well, well which, foolish you might say. W- w- well, which no commander would ever do, but well, that's yeah, why but he, he ended lost, up being dead. That's why he'd already lost one of his arms and one of his eyes. Yeah. Um, well, be- you think after that he might have decided it might no, he, not be such a great idea to no, stroll he, the No, he deck. was the bravest man and... Um, and you have to understand that the chances of him being killed or injured were very, very high indeed, yeah. but he didn't care. Right. And the um, the French sniper who spotted him couldn't believe his luck and, mm. and subsequently... Well, was he not hit? I thought he was hit by a bit of a cannonball. No, he wasn't. No, he was hit by a musket ball. Was he? Hit by a musket ball, mm. fired by a French sniper who but was in the rigging. Accurate. They weren't that accurate in those days. No, they, they weren't that accurate, and that's why it probably hit him where it did. Yeah. He probably aimed for his head mm. or something. Mm. But listen... Yeah, I wonder, tell I wonder, us more about the kaleidoscope of the football machinery. No, I've told you all about that. No, you haven't said why. What do you mean? Well, you oh, yes, uh, sorry, Clive So tonight, I see Mr Gold, who's yeah. co-owner of West Ham, yes. uh, at the LMA dinner, right. the League Managers Association, mm. delighted to say that Jose Mourinho got the award, yes. finally, right. after not getting a, a monthly award right. all season. But he was, he Extraordinary, was made, that, isn't it? Yeah, but he's made Manager of the Year, quite rightly. But um, Mr Gold, I mean, I, look... And I, I, I know Mr. Gold, and I've been to West Ham, and he's invited me into the, into the boardroom. Well, you were there not, not long ago, were you? I was there a few weeks ago. I didn't see him then. I saw him last season. Yeah. But the, why do you call him Mr. Gold, by the way? Because his name's Mr. Gold, why? Well, why what do you, do you think I should call well, him? you don't call everybody. Should I call him Mr. Silver? Well, no. Eh? Mr. Silver. Eh? No. Well, what a, what a no. stupid question. Maybe you should sign David Silver. Well, well oh, you know, no, when, but... I, when I walked into the bank today to sort out some complicated business, oh, yeah. they said, hello, Mr. Parry. Did they? What do you expect them to say? Oh, hello, hello okay. Tommy Cooper. Well, no, eh? but, but, I mean, you don't You're often mad. refer to people as Mr. Anything. Well, I do. There's only three people. That's the third person I've heard Ooh. you refer to as Mr., right? You refer yeah. to Mr. Brazil. Yes. You refer to Mr. Ken, right? Yes. And now you refer to Mr. Gold. Well, you know. only three people you call. Jose Mourinho, Jose Mourinho, what would you, not what, Mr Mourinho. So what do you call Mr Gold? Well, David Gold, his name. Oh, David Gold, oh, my mate, yeah. Well, he's not my mate, no. See, I don't do that. I don't try and make out that I know these people, you know, on, on really? first-name terms, even, even though I do. do. Even though I do. <laughs> um, 
Anyway, he says, uh, he's standing there very, very studiously and being mm. asked about the future of West Ham. And he yeah. said, well, he said, obviously, you know, Sam did a great job for us. We're very, very grateful. We're now looking for a new manager. Yeah. Oh, we've got any candidates? Well, you know, uh, Rafael Benitez really? uh, is going to be a candidate. Mm. And, uh, and who else did he name? news to Rafael Benitez. Oh, uh, 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 David Moyes. David Moyes. And, and, and then he said, and this is the cruncher, he said, of course, you know, West Ham are a leading Premier League team, mm. uh, combined with the fact they're going to the Olympic Stadium now. You know, this is an opportunity for a, a world-beating manager right. to come to... I mean, it's like... So this was his advert, basically. Yeah, yeah, you know, to come to West Ham, you know, we have a massive future. And, and the, the interviewer basically said, well, you know, um, you know, are you saying that any manager in the world now would... He said, yes, any manager in the world would want to come Beating and manage West Ham. Beating the door. Absolutely, absolutely, that's his, his attitude. And I'm thinking, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Are you not getting a little sort of beyond? But surely, surely you know, he should what, be. Uh, you know, West Ham have done very well. But what, what would you expect him mm. to say? He shouldn't. He couldn't stand there and say, "Well, of course, West Ham have become one of the mediocre teams in the Premier no, League." Of course, I didn't. Uh, they've got no hope of getting anywhere higher than about eighth. I expect, and, and therefore, no, we'd love to get a manager who's about sort of a mediocre kind of manager. No, I expected him to say because he, he actually gave Sam credit, saying he got us back up into the Premier League. He kept us in the Premier League. I think he then should have said. We want to maintain our progress. That allied to the move to our new stadium gives us huge ambitions to be a leading force in the Premier League. And I hope any manager worth his salt in the world will see that and beat a path to our door to manage this club. Mm. That's, uh, that's good PR. That would be good PR. Good but PR. see, once again, you're exhibiting see? how great a press officer you were at the well, FA. Well, thank you. you know, thank you. That's we, right. when we talk thank about, you for the compliment. Uh, no, it's yeah. true. I, I mean yes. it. When we talked about yes. Nigel Pearson and yes. the trouble he got himself into. Absolutely. If only these people... Why don't you hire yourself out on a kind of a consultancy basis? To well, I'm not sure I've got time. You know, my, my time is very, very much in demand at the moment. There's lots of things going on in life, I'm telling you, man. I think it would be great fun. Let me down. Mike Parry Communications would be tremendous. Good idea. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Loads more coming up. This is Talk Sport Extra Time. Uh, we are the two mics. There will be a mm. podcast coming out, of course, uh, around about six or seven hours yep. from now. Got a few tweets coming in on your tribe front. Right, OK. Uh, Saoud has sent in rather a good picture of the Minions, uh, oh, the who minions. are, of course, starring in this new movie, saying, is this, is this part of your tribe? Yeah, well, um, you know, I don't mind a joke or two, as long as it's not insulting, you no. know what I mean? There's mm. one here that's slightly insulting, but mm. I think I should read it out anyway. Jozza says, Dear Porky, how mm. do I leave your tribe? He's actually sent this in as an Ask Porky. You mm. are an oppressive disgrace of a human being, and I want out, please. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit harsh. It is a bit harsh, isn't Can it? I just tell you, nobody leaves the Porky tribe, OK? Yeah. You're turning into... Sort Kim Jong Un, you, at <laughs> this point, right. you yeah, shoot somebody with an yeah. anti-aircraft gun. Yeah. No, who, who, which organisation was it said? You know, we recruit you, but you never leave. Is that the mafia? Uh, I think maybe. Yeah, um, you never leave the mafia. Oh no, I know it is. It was the KGB. Oh, the you KGB. never left the KGB. Oh, okay. The only way you left the KGB was you're always dispatched. In a box. Then, no, no, you're always dispatched to submarine duties. All oh, right. And then when you got on the submarine, the submarine went underwater. You never seen it. You never seen it again. No, that's right. No. Absolutely. They release you through yeah. your torpedo Absol- chamber absolutely. one or something like Listen, that. Listen, I want to talk to you about your dog because I haven't talked to you about dog, your dog yes. for a long time. I hope yeah, you're looking after that he's dog. He's very well, actually. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, and you exercised at the weekend. Yeah, a fantastic. Uh, in fact, we thought we lost him at the weekend. It was a bit of a worry. Oh, yeah. Took him to the woods um, or near, where, near where the house is. And uh, it's a place where loads of people take their dogs. Right. And the kids were there. And we were trying to fix this, um, uh, fix up this kind of swing. Because they like there's a swing on yes. one of the trees, you know. But some idiot made of thrown, rope, uh, made of rope. Yeah, but rope you know, if, if anything happened, that rope snapped. Somebody mm. would get sued for putting a rope up that snapped and injured a child. Well, you know, to be honest, it's not a park. It's more of a yeah. sort of a rough woodland type yeah, sure. area. You know, yeah, that's yeah, passed yeah, through yeah, it. Yeah. But but somebody had thrown it up too high, so I was trying to get it down so they could get on it. And well, you were trying to get the rope down. I was trying to get it down. <laughs> yeah, with that a, was a laugh. Did you climb a tree? No, I was using a big <laughs> stick. No, I was using a big stick. Well, you wouldn't get up the tree. Well, no, I couldn't climb. The tree would collapse. I couldn't climb up the tree. Very harsh. Anyway, because I spent about five minutes and they were watching it and everything and we turned around no sign of the dog and right. I was like where's the dog and they yeah. said oh I don't know um, and he'd been running about with another dog but he's never I mean, he normally doesn't walk or wander, right. or wander off but he was on the right. lead you know right. anyway so we started calling his name no answer that can be quite worrying it was very worrying well I was I was just thinking you know how am I going to make a phone call to say by, well, by the way the dog's been kidnapped because yeah. he's a very beautiful dog who and would he you is... have to make that phone call to well I'd have to make that phone call to the mother of my children who yeah right good. yeah you know. she's fond of the dog as well yeah well of course she's fond of the dog yeah, okay. you know and no, I thought it was your dog well, it's it's the family dog, right? Okay, you know yeah, why, why okay. is that why is that difficult to understand? I mean, I'm no. his master because yes, dogs tend to be 
mean, yeah. tend yeah. to be more loyal to a male kind of, you know, dominant. But dominant anyway, figure. look, you've heard these terrible anyway, stories sorry, where, where dogs go off and run down foxes. So you don't want to hear the end trapped. of the story, then? Yes, I do. I do. Well, it turned out that he'd, he'd followed some people down the road, uh, oh, yeah. down the path, yes. and what we didn't want was for him to go back towards where the car park was because there's a busy road there and all that. Yes. And he'd found some people having a picnic, so of course he was, you know, mm. helping himself with some sandwiches. So he was mm. fine, absolutely fine. Right. And uh, no, but how did you actually find him? Well, we just walked towards where we thought he might be. Oh, well, and he was yeah, in this. He was in this I kind see. of. Um, okay. Uh, sort of clearing where no, people were having a picnic. That's a relief for two reasons. Firstly, he might have run down a foxhole and got trapped. You've heard of dogs being mm. trapped down foxholes for six days at a yeah, time. Right. But secondly, dog nappers are on well, the loose. Well, dog nappers are on the loose. Oh, right? on that the was loose. why Everywhere. I was suddenly... I mean, I'll, ne- I'll never do it again. I'll never mm. leave it out of my sight again. No. You know, it was very careless. But anyway, anyway, listen, what yeah. I've come across, because of my research on life and, and everything that happens yes. in life, is this, that um, men actually talk more to their dogs than they do to their wives. Really? They, they, they you know, they go for a walk like you do, yeah. but without their children. Yeah. They find a bench in the middle of a park or something like that. Mm. They sit there and they start talking to their dog, OK? Right. Yeah. Now, to avoid uh, being thought of as a loony for talking to your dog... Yeah. Mind you, it wouldn't bother me. I wouldn't care. No, because my dog would understand what I was saying. Mm. I think dogs. You haven't can... got a dog, though, have you? No, I haven't got a dog. But dogs. But you can... are an expert in it, though. Well, I know about dog behaviour. Do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I know about canine behaviour. All you know behavior. about canine behaviour is that you once had a dog that beat it... its head against the wall until it killed itself. You see, that is so That's unkind. It was an epileptic dog. <laughs> it wasn't my fault, you know, and I didn't... An epileptic I, dog. It was an epileptic... Why, did you go why to are the, you laughing about an well, epileptic dog? Because why, why are you laughing you about to, the miseries you, of a poor little creature? Why would you go to a pet shop and say, have you got an epileptic dog I can Oh, have? yeah, of course we did and said we want an epileptic dog. <laughs> you are an idiot. The dog didn't know he was epileptic. Well, nobody otherwise he could have told you, could Nobody he? else knew he was epileptic. What's that, Lassie? Dogs, You're epileptic? Dogs, um... <laughs> I, I think the uncaring nature of, of this conversation is bewildering to me. Is it? Bewildering. Oh, if sorry. you was a dog owner, yeah. you know. What I was well, I'm say a dog was, owner. What I was going to say was that it's pretty well known to everybody that dogs can lip read. Yes. So they can see what their owners are trying it's to say. It's just that they can't and, tell you what uh, it is no, that so no. they've, they've been able to no, lip read. They can empathise or sympathise, but one particular uh, organisation that sells mini earplugs, mm. i.e. not... Like, you know, earphones like we've got on. But, yeah. But well, I mean, like things like that you got. get for your phone. Yeah, things that you just plug in your ears. Yeah. Um, now make Earphones, them. Earphones, people call them. Yeah, that's right, yeah. But they now make them without any lead at the side really? for people who walk their dogs and want to sit down and talk to their dogs. Right. And they just put it in the, the end of the wire in their pocket yeah. and they can then pretend... That they are what do you talk- mean they now make them for this purpose? They, why, wouldn't you just, why wouldn't you just put a pair of earphones in your head and not plug them in? Well, because why would you have to buy special ones? Yeah, they're only two pounds, and yeah, they just, they just you don't need to buy no, them. No, no, you do, and uh, and it well, means earphones that don't work. Earphones that don't work, deliberately not made to work. Why don't you just use the, the ones you've got for the, free with your phone? Because not everybody's got those. The elder people don't have those. Elder people don't have those. Oh, haven't you got any? Yes, I have actually. Yeah, but that's to listen to our podcast in oh, the right. morning. Okay. You know, when when I'm moving around the house, uh-huh. that kind of stuff. You see what I mean? Oh, really? You play, yeah. Why don't you just put it on uh, uh, and play it through your computer or something? Uh, because if I move from one room to another, I miss vital bits of oh, okay, it, right. and I have to sort of check on your performance. Right. You know what I mean? Um, you so, can put so, it on all your televisions at the same time. Uh, uh, maybe I could, but it's a complicated procedure. Yeah. If I want to keep up to date with yes. what's going on in the news of world course. and the sports, oh, world. you got that all on as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, right. and so bloody oh, um, noisy. So, so, so these. Uh, well, not if you've got your earphones in and you listen to one thing, mm. but I can see the pictures yeah, yeah. of news and sport, oh, yeah, you know, right. so I can take them out and say, oh, that's okay. something about dull bleach or something, you know. Right. Now, what I'm saying is, is that people sit on the benches because they don't wish to be appear to be um, thought of as mad um, when, they're, when they're sitting there talking. Right. And that in itself is a reflection on society that so many of us now put up with people who walk up and down the streets mm. literally talking to themselves yeah. or that, with the appearance of talking to themselves right. when, in fact, they're on the phone. But yeah. sometimes they're not on the phone. They're, sometimes I mean, these people are talking to yeah, themselves. that can be quite unnerving, can't it? Very when unnerving. somebody comes up behind you and you hear mm. them say something uh, exactly. and it sounds almost like they're talking to you and sometimes yeah. you turn around. Yeah. And particularly now when some of them have got the... Because you know you can get headphones, or earphones rather, that have got a little speaker, a little microphone attached to That's the wire. That's what I'm saying, just below and your so, chin. So you, they don't look as if they're on the phone. That's right, So yeah. you don't actually know yeah. that, they're, uh, that they're talking to anybody else on the phone. I know, I, I know. I can see you've already lost interest no, in No, I haven't, I haven't, honestly. You are, I, you're drifting away again. I am not, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you on that one. And, and I, do, um, I do think it's one, you know, another one of society's phenomenons. Talking about dogs, by the way, yeah. talking about dogs, as mm. we are talking about dogs, mm. do 
do you know that the fastest growing profession in this country yeah. is dog walking? Is it really? Dog walking. Do you remember okay. those guys we used to see in New York who would walk like 10 oh, dogs yeah. at a time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which was a very lucrative business, actually. Well, well I tell you what, I don't know whether it's come across the Atlantic and all that kind of stuff, but for instance, the people who own Wimbledon Common yeah. will only allow one person to walk four dogs at a time. Oh, really? They will not have a situation like we used to see in Central Park, yeah. you know, where there's 10 dogs and all that. Well, for sometimes two just even walking down the street, they'd have yeah, like 10 dogs. Th- crazy. Th- that's right. Yeah, you would actually in yeah. Manhattan. You yeah. would, yeah. But it's for two reasons. Firstly, uh, large groups of dogs attract other dogs mm. and that causes fights. Yeah. But secondly, of course, there is the poop scoop problem, yes. which you have to be extremely aware well, of. Well, there's also the mating, large... uh, the mating problem, I would have thought. Well, that's what I'm saying, with mm. other, other, other gangs of dogs. but uh, not gangs of dogs. Well, well, I mean... <laughs> roam around. Hang on, if you've got ten dogs on a lead, that's yeah. a gang of dogs, as well, far as I'm concerned. No, it's not a gang well, of dogs. Well, what would you call it, then? It's, it's just a collection of dogs. No, it's not a collection of dogs, it's a gang of dogs. How is it a gang? Because they're all together, yeah, ten surely, dogs. Surely the definition of a gang is, is, is an organisation of, of, of a group of people or, or animals, if you like, mm. uh, even though I'm not really sure any animal could be in a gang. Yeah, uh, with a, with a sort of a firm belief that they're all doing something together. No, well they are. These dogs, dogs are, are all not... being walked together. You fool! Where yeah, do you, they not, come from? They're not in a gang. This though, guy doesn't go around, you know, picking dogs like... up and saying, "Come on, I'll take you for a walk." <laughs> He's employed to do it. But they're not like running some kind of territory in you know some part of Southwest London, are they? You can bet your the life. The Wimbledon dog gang. I bet you, you can bet your <laughs> life there'll be some territories now which certain dogs walk on and nowhere else. Because mm. dogs leave their scent everywhere. They do, that's they true. They leave their urine yeah. uh, and stuff yeah, like right, that. Yeah, steady on. And so, no, no. It's a family I'll, show, so, this year. So, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. So but surely I'm... you'd just call them a pack of dogs, wouldn't you? No, you call them a gang of dogs. Gang you don't of get dogs. packs of dogs. You get packs of wolves. Yeah. You don't get packs of, uh, of dogs. OK. But um, the, average pr- the average salary now for a dog walker in this mm. country, yeah. um, you know, fully trained and all that, yeah. is 26,000 to... Oh, no, it's not. What is it? It's... Uh, <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. What are you laughing at? Because you're Here figuring are. out the wrong number. It's 26,500 a year. Yeah, well, that's about the average salary, isn't No, it? it's not. The average salary in this country now it's is... 26,000. No, it's not. It's 22,000. Are you really? 22,000 is the average salary in this... I'm uh, sure it's 26. Here are. Research found dog walkers are charging an average of 11.50 an hour. Right. More than 70% more than the minimum wage... They earn 26,496 per year, significantly above the national average of 22,044 pence. And how many of these dog walkers are there then, do you reckon? Well, quite a lot of them. Really? It's, grow- it's a growing. Uh... Well, they've got to control the gangs, I suppose. Yeah, our walkers in the South East can earn significantly more than the national average, with an average fee of £14 per dog per hour. Right. Typical workload of 192 dogs See, per month. I wouldn't month, want someone else to walk my dog. Equating to 32 grand a year. Now, that's not a bad salary, that no, is it? Not. Well, maybe it's something you could. Uh, I mean, you haven't got time to do anything else. But, I mean, uh, you know, yeah. for, for people who perhaps are looking for a job, it's not a bad place to go, is it? Well, yeah. Do you any qualifications? Well, I think you've got to be good with dogs, obviously. Yeah, right. oh, you don't remember their names. There's too many of them. But here, I will give this guy a plug for it. <laughs> What's you laughing at? Why would you have to remember their names? Well, you'd have to remember the name of a dog. If you're a dog was misbehaving, you'd have to shout it and say, well, hey, he's on a lead if you're Rover, walking him. Stop it. He's only on um, a lead if he's walking, though. Yeah, well, whatever. But listen, we'll give this guy... I don't know what you're laughing at. This guy, I like his entrepreneurial talent. His yeah. name's Alan Brady. Head of the dog gang, is he? No, he owns mydogwalker.co.uk. Okay. He's got five staff, 15 right. acres of meadows where he walks the dogs, mm. and he also puts people out on the streets to walk them. Right. In, believe it or not, stockbroker belts, sorry. There How about we are. that? Fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's nothing like yeah. entrepreneurs to uh, warm totally the copies of your heart. You I think totally they agree. are the people that they are make the, the They make the economy go round. Yeah, exactly. and, I, and I tell you, the dog gangs, they could be a very significant factor <laughs> in urban life in... Um, I'll tell you what, what about the... Have you seen uh, the time? The urban foxes. Never mind that. Look at the time. We'll soon have wars. We'll have, we'll have gangs of dogs against gangs of foxes <laughs> in urban wars. We will. We will. It's like some kind of we dystopian will. nightmare. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. More coming up. On digital radio and 1089 and 1053 AM, Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport Extra Time. We are the two mics, and that's a very appropriate uh, band that uh, they play. What's They're that? the Bloodhound Gang. The Bloodhound Gang. So you may be right. Maybe oh, they're right. Yeah, they formed themselves into a band and started making records now. Yeah, well, I tell Shocking. you, the, these, uh, these urban walls will happen between dogs. Talking about dogs, by the way, did yeah. you see that incredible picture 
of um, this dog, right? The owner, uh, you know, he, he's a bloke who had his dog and you know, nobody else in the house, so he had to leave it in the yard every day. Is this the one that learned how to do or go on the trampoline? On the trampoline? Yeah, fantastic. Have you seen the video? It, yeah, it, uh, utterly unbelievable. Yeah. He couldn't work out how the dog always met him at the station. Yeah. He built a fence big enough around the back of the garden, you know, and the advice of vets that your dog will never get over this. Right. He's six foot tall. What did the dog do? He, he used the, the chap's exercise trampoline in yeah. the back and the dog he ran towards it, bounced on it, bang, and he was over the fence. I know. Isn't it amazing? Absolutely incredible. Absolutely amazing. Here's a great one from Jozza who sent oh, this yeah. in. He says, I think I've found the leaders of my local dog gang. Oh, Scary yeah. stuff. Uh, what's that <laughs> picture of? It's a picture of a dog with a hoodie on. Yes, I know, but I mean, that's ridiculous, <laughs> isn't it? You know, these uh, dogs get a bad reputation, don't they, because of one or two breeds, mm. you know, like the um, the Staffies and the... Um, What's the other one? The, do- the, the pit bull the terriers, the Doberman well. pinches, and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, but dogs are are actually uh, pretty good. Now I want to talk to you, right? I want to mm. talk to you about a phenomenon which I've been researching in the musical world. Oh yeah. What about B side records that became A side hits? Oh yeah. What about them? Well, uh, the, the the point is, more and more of them are coming to light. Mm. And um, you know that um, oh, what's his name? Had died. The lead singer of Choc- Hot Chocolate recently. Yes, Errol Brown. Errol Brown. Yeah. Right. And you know the song that made them was you made them was you sexy. Thing, yes, right? Right. That was that was only a B side. Was it? That was only a B side. What? So it was released first as a B side of something else. It was the B side on on the side. I don't know what the uh, the other side of the record was called. Don't know what the A side was called. I'm sure, you've researched this thoroughly. Yeah, yeah, I have researched it thoroughly. Um, what was it? Uh, I can't remember. But anyway, look, just to give you some. Uh, classic, right, classic B-sides, yeah. which the DJs didn't like, so they turned the record over, because mm. in those days, they just to let our younger listeners know, mm. they produced 45 revs per minute records yes. with the A-side on the top and yes. the B-side on the bottom. Otherwise known as singles, right? Singles, that's mm. right, singles, yeah. Although, of course, sometimes they released double A-sides, didn't they? Sometimes, yeah, but not very often. Yeah. Not very often. But anyway, who do you think made this record? 13 women. And only one man in town. 13 women, only one man in town. No idea. That was the A-side of Bill Haley and the Comets' um, Rock Around the Clock. Oh, really? How about that? Fascinating. Isn't that amazing? I didn't know that. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Mm. Now, one of the other ones which you... So how long, for for example, would they have played the A-side before realising, actually, this is not very good, we'll turn it over? Well, it just happens on the DJ playing yeah. it. It could happen at one radio station, yeah. and all of a sudden they get a terrific response, mm. and, then it, and then it just goes like wildfire through mm. the industry. Now, the other one, which is probably the most famous in this country, right, yeah. was... Uh, 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 um, it was called Reason to Believe. Reason to Believe. Rod Stewart. That's right. Yeah. That was the A side. That was the A side, right? Yeah, what so was the B side? The B side of that would have been, um, hmm, I don't know. But I remember that period. That was when he was playing yes. with the faces, wasn't it? Yes. And it was around the Maggie May kind of time. Well, here, listen Maggie to May. this. Listen to this. This is, this is what the B side was. What was it? This one. Are you sure they're ready for yeah, this? Yeah, I'm sure they are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They're ready. Of course they're ready. Of course yeah. they're ready. Absolutely. Well, was it Maggie May? It was Maggie May. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, got to that, and, 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 and Rod Stewart actually um, thought that it was such a bum record, he didn't yeah. even want to make it. Right. And then when he made it, you know, it then became the classic and the and the record that defined him. Mm. Is that not true? I think it is true. Right. Yeah, Maggie May was definitely the one that uh, was... That's the famous uh, scene of him on top of the pots with the long yeah. stem ex- ex- into microphone. Ex- exactly, it? when he started twirling around, all that kind of yeah. stuff. The other- oh, here we go, they found it. Oh, I think they had the B-side uh, up yeah, at first. They probably did. Isn't this the song you sang at the Christmas party? It was. In fact, there's video of you singing this. Absolutely, there is video. Yeah, of well, you uh, with a very frightened-looking Matt Holland. That's right. In the on corner. Two, on, on two mics Matt Holland. I think Matt Holland, I don't know if it's Matt Holland's yeah. missus, who mm. looks even more terrified well, of what's going to happen next. Folks, if you haven't seen two mics on YouTube yet, have a look at that, because it is on there. Yeah, it is. The, the other classic ones, yeah. and, and this is obviously one that I would regard as a classic, yeah. was uh, Hello, Goodbye, yeah. which Paul McCartney thought was brilliant. Oh, what, you say hello, I say goodbye. That yeah, one. yeah. You say hi, I say hello. You say bye, and I say no, no, no. Ooh, I'm which, not sure you know, the words, which was de- described as a bit uh, flossy because yeah. the other side was John Lennon's absolute classic, mm. "I'm a Walrus." Oh, really? But for some unknown reason, um, McCartney persuaded you know uh, George Martin. But actually, I think he's probably right on no. that one, isn't he? Because the no. A side of "Hello Goodbye," mm. "Hello Goodbye" is a much more commercial single than "I'm a Walrus." Yes, I suppose you're right. But "I'm a Walrus" was such a fantastic record. Yeah, but it? it was. I mean, at that time, it must have sounded very weird to an awful lot of people because yeah. it was the kind of yeah. music that nobody had ever heard. Yeah, it must. Uh, yeah, I suppose it must have done. Well, they had actually. Because if you think about it, 
the the B side to Penny Lane. Penny Lane was a very commercial single. Yes. The B side was Strawberry Fields Forever. Yeah. Okay. And I'm a Walrus is very much in the same vein, yes, wasn't it? I would that say sort so. Of, you know, and actually, if you think yeah. about it, it's quite clever because that way, if you buy the single, which mm. is the very commercial one, yes. you then get into the other stuff, yeah. uh, which might make you want to buy the album. Absolutely. The, so I, mean, of, I see. In my in my, uh, if you were to be a kind of you know uh, press officer type, you, you know, crisis manager mm. sort of thing, I'm in my. If I had another life to, I'd love to be in the music business. I think I'd be quite good at it. Why? What would you've done in it? Well, like that kind of thing, you know, like choosing what single to put out, choosing what to put on the other side of it, and, and, you know, and, that kind and of basically thing. trying to fool managing, the public, managing a band. I'd yeah, love but, to yeah, do but that. what you do is you do all the Malcolm McLaren stuff, all these stupid stunts, no, get, not at all. getting your band to spit at the audience no, and all that sort of filthy. No, no. Behavior, why do you immediately you? assume that that's what I would be in some kind of punk situation? If I if I was the manager of a band, the first thing I'd tell a band to do is I'd book them a, a hotel on the fifth floor, right, yeah. and I'd tell them to throw the television out the window yeah. because that's classic uh, rock star yeah. behavior. Yeah, I would is. make absolutely sure. Seriously, I'd get a couple of security guards. Yeah, but nowadays to go you wouldn't downstairs do that. Do you know that I very nearly, I very nearly became a, a record mogul actually in my young days. Oh yeah, of course you did. I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a mate of mine when yeah. I was at uh, I was at City and East London FE College doing my A levels. Oh right, uh, and okay. A mate yeah. Of mine, yeah. So uh, you're about eighteen, were you? And just I was about, about to crash through in the, the, into the world of pop yeah, music. I was about eighteen, and a mate yeah. of mine yeah. was good friends uh, with a guy called Jeff, uh, whose second name now escapes me, but he was running a little place in Notting Hill called yeah. Rough Trade Records. Right? Okay, genius called uh, rough, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Rough Trade Records His became. Can't remember, yeah. Rough Trade Records became one of the biggest record companies at that time. Really? About about two or three years later. And who were the bands on because their books? They, they just signed loads and loads of new wave bands. I can't remember any of them off the top of my head now. So hang on. So, so Jeff, whose name you can't remember, yeah. became well, music I'm just, mogul I'm just, I'm just the for story. signing a load of bands whose names you can't remember. Wow, this well, guy. I can was, look up Rough he, Trade Records he, if you want, he, and I can tell you he, who they he signed. He clearly was a music mogul. But clearly my, a music mogul. Well, he was guy. because. But well, nobody's ever heard of him. It's a fantasy. It's all in your head. Jeff Travis. I've just been told that's his name, Jeff Travis. Right? Jeff Travis. You won't have heard of him. Have you heard of Jarvis Cocker? Yeah, of course I've heard yeah, of Jarvis Cocker. Yeah, well, he was Cocker. one of his artists. Okay, uh, you're making all this up. I'm not making it up. Actually, but the point of the story is, mm, mm. I can't believe you've just made me say that. Right, go on, go on. I cannot yeah. believe I've just said the well, point I'm of the so, story I'm is. I've been working with you that, now for nearly yeah, a year, yeah, and yeah. I've started saying the point of well, the story is. Of course oh, you have. Because, God, because, kill me now. Because I am, I'm the kill man. I'm the man who cuts to the quick and gets to the very core of a story. Next thing I'll say is, don't worry about the time. Right, because we've got time to finish this story. No, so what happened was we went to see this guy, and it was literally this ramshackle shop with a bit of an upstairs place that he was yeah. using as a recording studio. Yeah. And he needed, guess what he needed? He Go needed on. two people to put in £2,000 to help right. him do the next stage of whatever it was that he was going to do. Right. And my friend, who came from quite a wealthy family in mm. North London, mm. he said, look, this is a great opportunity for us. He said, can you get £2,000 together? And, of course, I couldn't. I was mm. 18. Yeah. yeah. My dad didn't have any money. No. You know, I didn't have any money. No. I didn't know anybody that had any money. Could have been a wasted investment. No, it wouldn't have been. R- no, rough no, trade no. Records. I, I said you didn't know at the time. It well, no, been, I, yeah. yeah, but, but I mean, yeah. uh, what we did know... So was did your mate put two grand in? Yeah, he did, yeah. And what happened? Uh, I don't know, because I don't know him anymore. Well, yeah, so so it's not a huge success story, and you don't know that you may become a multi-millionaire. No, but I know that Jeff Travis did, and yeah, I know that well, if I'd put 2,000 quid in, I would now be probably uh, sitting on an island somewhere in the Caribbean. I doubt it very much indeed. I just wanted to tell you Have that to be because a big of my, island as well. you know, my right? musical prowess. Mm. That was, you know, mm. That's what I could have ended up doing. Yeah, I, I don't think You're so. You're not impressed with that story at all. I, I'm, I'm really not impressed because the detail is so scant. You know, well, it, it seems to me ago. you dreamed that story up to make no. yourself look, you know, oh, I could have been a music mogul, you know what I mean? Well, it's a genuine story. I could have been story. Malcolm McLaren. Well, no, it's a genuine you know, story. I could have been Simon Cowell of the day. It's rubbish. It's well, nonsense. It's There's a... no fact involved in it. You're it's... a dreamer. Well, I told you the dreamer. name of... Dreamer. I told you the name of the... Who was that by? Little dreamer. Who was that by? Uh, that was by... Uh... You don't even know, do you? Yeah, yeah, the There's same... There's you know about music. Hang on, it's the same band who did uh, Silver Machine. No, it isn't. I, Silver Machine was Hawkwind. Take, uh, right, that's right, Hawkwind, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. well, Dreamer was by Supertramp. Supertramp, there you go, same not, sort of band. Not the same band at all. Now, listen, the no, biggest... No, there's no time for that. You one, have to hold on no, to it. No, very quickly, I'm hold just, just got to tell you. Time. The biggest B-side ever that became an A-side. One of the, one of the biggest rubbish. hits. Yeah, yeah, Glorious Gainers classic. Glorious Gainer. <laughs> <laughs> no, Gloria Gainers. Gloria Gainers. Glory Gainer's classic, I will like, survive. It sounds like a UFC fighter. Glorious Gainer. I will survive. I will survive. What is that in the style of Dirk Bogard? No, I will survive. Oh, no. uh, yeah. All right, so I tell us survive. what the B side of that was. Well, I, didn't, I don't know what the B side Hang on, I'll find well, out. I thought that was the whole point of the I've story. Marie, uh, yeah, you said yeah. it again. Yeah, here God, you are. Save me. Uh, Gloria Gaynor's 1978 classic, I Will Survive, is the B side yeah, of the time of. it's recording. 
um, Gaynor was paralysed, actually, because she fell off the stage in the previous recording. Why so do you find that she, so funny? Well, because that's why she wrote it. I will survive. It was nothing about a love affair. It was about, oh, I've got a broken back. Really? Well, not the Who song. Not, so not that substitute, substitute, no. Substitute for another guy. Yeah. Wasn't that, you sure? No, it wasn't that, no. Well, anyway, she wrote that song. Or, or Did she, you? Was that one of those songs that in your time as a disco kind of, uh, you know, champion that you yeah. would have been dancing to that? Which one? Say? I Will Survive. It was post-disco for was me. It? That was when I was a reporter on the mm. Birmingham Mail in Birmingham. Right. And Birmingham had a very big sort of disco scene, you know, and it was it was, uh, it very... Still uh, does along that street. What's it, that street it, it, where... It, uh, Broad, Broad Street. Broad Street, yeah. Mm, that's still, right. There's still and, loads and, of, sort and, of clubs and, and things And, you know, it was one of the first country, uh, cities in this country to have a great ethnic mix, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so that sort of music, disco music, was huge there. Mm. And I must admit, a couple of times we went into discos there and it was uh, it was playing, but... It was it was my my disco lifetime yeah. really ended with uh, night fever. It's Saturday night fever. Th- th- yeah, yeah, that was about it really. Mm. And then after that, you, had you to know, put the white suit away. Yeah, I had to put the white suit away and sort of outgrew it all. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. But it, it is fascinating the way those records. Now, listen, I want to talk to you about um, you know something that I'm doing for the nation, and that's my interest in obesity. Yes, not personal obesity. My, no, not personal. Well, my obesity no, campaign. Well, you've already said well, there's the you obesity do. campaign uh, yeah, signal. Yeah, well, you've yeah. previously said that you, your lifestyle choice is to be obese. Yeah, but I'm not obese. I found out. You said that that is. What do you mean you found out? I found out because my. Who told you that? I've been looking at the records. My waist measurement is below that which is designated as obese. Right. That's for sure. That's for sure. I found out, honestly. Now then. Uh, I've got two um, two things I've got to tell you. First of all, this week, mm. the um, the government, the current government, the new government, has been told by the NHS chiefs yeah. the ob- obesity strategy in this in this country is failing, completely well, failing. Well, you can tell that by just looking around, can't you? Have you seen the ludicrous claim that's emerged today that mm. some children are obese in the womb? Yeah. I mean, how ludicrous is that? Well, I mean, it does how seem... How ludicrous is that? It does seem that? as though the lunatics have taken over the asylum when it comes to yeah. this stuff, because, uh, so. you know, there are such things as... You know, scientific measurements for these things, right? Yeah. So the BMI index will tell you whether uh, you're overweight. It's ludicrous. But what they've, I think the mistake they've made is mm. they started using the word obese about people who weren't actually obese. Because when That's you right. and I were growing up, obesity yeah. was, was gross, really gross, overweighted people, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. It wasn't just people who were slightly overweight. I mean, I don't get this. The, the NHS chief, a lady called Professor Nina Modal, oh, yeah. um, has actually said publicly that children start to get fat in their mother's wombs. Mm. And she's the UK's most senior children's doctor. I think that's ludicrous. Yeah. I can't possibly um, argue with Professor uh, Modal on scientific research right. and all that. But she's president of the Royal College of Paediatrics. Yeah. That's, that's child care, isn't it? Yeah. And child health, she says, an obese child is going to be an obese adult. An obese adult is going to have obese children. Yeah. So we've got a very, very vicious downward generational spiral that mm. we need to uh, nip in the bud. I mean, I suppose if you were to say that if somebody is uh, obese and, as, and becomes pregnant yeah. and then continues to eat to excess, mm. then it's a possible possibility that the child in their womb will be over I, overfed. I, I can see that, but what I'm saying is, I mean, the whole thing's ridiculous. The reason that there's an obesity crisis is that too many fat people eat too much food... Yeah, exactly, and, and don't a, do enough exercise. And don't do enough exercise. A, food is very cheap in this country, yeah. and B... The welfare system in this country is over generous, which means that mm. people can spend excess amounts of disposable income yeah. on food. And the wrong kind and of food is the cheap food as well, isn't it? The wrong kind That's of food should be. And I'm afraid it's a fact of life that if somebody's dependent on somebody else to look after them, yeah. which is what the welfare system promulgates, encourages, yeah. encourages, it means you're less likely to go and cook healthy food. You go to takeaways all the time. Yeah. You eat burgers and pizza. That's right. and, and I'm not being cruel and unkind to people who are out of work. I mm. feel sorry for you, because we all need a reason to get up every day, but I'm afraid that is the way that mm. life works. That's yeah. the way the brain works, well, you know? Well, the interesting thing, I mean, when you and I talk about growing up as well, yeah. and, uh, you know, there wasn't that much food available, basically. No, I mean, wasn't. you talked about your mother, uh, yeah. you know, living through the 50s, and there was still ration books and all that kind of thing. until two years after I yeah. was born. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, you know, the fact is, I mean, I remember, you know, there was no such thing as a massive supermarket anywhere, you know, you would go to one shop and buy shop, yeah. enough for maybe one night's food and then I you'd agree. go the next day and get something else and, yeah. you know, the fact I think is that some people presented with the amount of food that's now on offer, mm. they literally can't stop eating. 
You know, you uh, see people, I mean, I see kids at my, my mm. kids' school. Mm. You know, as soon as they come out of school, they're opening up bags of crisps. You know, it's, they're uh, eating know, chocolate. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, uh, everywhere you go, you know, the crisps are bigger, and you can, for an extra 10p, you get I mean, a bigger I mean, bag. You know, I mean, got... you said for an extra pound at the Toby Carvery, that's right. you can have twice as much food. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah. nonsensical, it is. isn't it? It, it is. And do you know what the most frightening um, shelf is, or, or aisle, the most yeah. frightening aisle in a supermarket, mm. is that it, go, it seems to go on for half a mile. The only yeah. thing you can see left and right are bags of crisps. Yeah. Literally. Or, and or, massive, or, uh, massive bags massive of crisps. Massive bags of crisps and all that. Now, what about this other one here? Living near a noisy road drives us to put on weight. Now, now, I saw, that. I saw that yesterday. Where is this coming from? It's Where's come the from theory? Sweden. Yeah. It's, it's come from Sweden. Researchers right. in Sweden have found that adults who live in an area disrupted by road traffic, trains or planes, were 25% more likely to have a bulge, spare tyre or centre of obesity. It comes from the fact that people in noisy environments feel stressed out. Yeah. And when they're stressed out, they turn to the fridge and start eating. Right. I mean, this is all ludicrous nonsense. It is. Just don't eat. Yeah. And you won't get fat. Well, it's as uh, simple as that. Well, or actually, if you, if you, I mean, my father had a different uh, attitude to this he was like eat as much as you want to eat but walk everywhere and actually you that's know take, take an awful lot of exercise that's what i do with I t- respect I... when with respect he was a lot thinner than you though yeah well of course he is because his metabolism right. uh, led him to be thinner yeah, that's what i mean your father got thin through brain power because yeah. he was a very bright no, man and he actually did walk everywhere yeah i know i, know. I mean well, he, I mean, he yeah. used, to, used to sometimes walk from north london down to his office in fleet street you know yeah. quite if it was a nice day how far quite, was that um, I don't know, probably about four or five miles. Yeah, that's not bad. That would take him about an hour and a half. Something like that, yeah. yeah that's if right. it was a nice day, quite often he would do that. He was always on the golf course, playing golf, because yeah. he had one of those jobs that you could do that. I object sometimes to walking in the summer because, of it's course... It's hot for you. You have to spy. Yeah. And that's not good for you, you know. Well, and, it is uh, good for you if you're trying not, to lose it, weight, surely. Uh, no, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Well, yeah, but, I know. mean, if you were a jockey, for example, mm. you always hear about them sitting in the sauna for, yeah, like, I'm two not, hours. Yeah, I'm not a jockey. No, I know, but in yeah. order to lose weight, they sweat it off. Yeah, OK, So why if you Well, if you were going to sweat... no. Then it would lose weight for you. No, the per- no, that's not the purpose of my walking. The purpose of my walking is to make my muscles and bones supple. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, but why uh, not have a secondary result, which is a happy one, which means you lose a bit of weight? Because I don't like looking sweaty, to be honest. I think it's I horrible. I you should care when and you if, look sweaty. And, and if I'm going to a restaurant at the other end on the North Downs or something, I don't want to walk in there looking like I've just got out of a sauna. No, what I was going to say about this, uh, this research mm. on noisy roads, it's all utterly ridiculous. Uh, the findings are important as having excess fat around the stomach is much more harmful than having a tendency to accumulate it elsewhere on the body, such as the legs, really? the thighs, or the chest, OK? Mm, yeah. P- people with central obesity... Now, this is very interesting. This interests you. Who are defined as men having a waist bigger than 40 inches. Uh-huh. Have you got a waist bigger than 40 I inches? No, I haven't, actually. Neither no. have I. Yeah. This, is, this is what I think is Well, you great. shouldn't have. You've only got inside leg of 26 and a half. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. That's, that's because of the particular statuesque uh, sh- build shape of, of my body. Yeah, um, shortness of the legs. 40 inches, and women greater than 35 inches mm. have been found to be at a far higher risk of sudden heart attacks, diabetes and cancer. Right. So it's all, I, what I think is so rubbish is that somebody out there has decided, ooh, obesity, mm. this is a great industry. Yeah. Let's get into the diet pill yeah. um, industry, right? right? Yeah. When, in fact, all they should be doing is putting adverts on the telly mm. saying, you are fat, yeah. you are not attractive to the opposite sex, yeah, you are not attractive to the same sex, you are not well, attractive... there are some people who are attracted to fat You are not attractive course. to your parents, mm. to your brothers or your sisters, because you look fat and gross and people discard fat and no, gross people. I don't go along with that. I don't think that's a good way to approach it. Well, I do, been, because... Then they been, frighten you into being suggested. isolated well, no, in society. Well, that's been suggested before. No. And, and what you're then doing is you're castigating anyone uh, who is in any way overweight. You've got to frighten and, people into no, getting I don't, thin. No, I don't believe so. If they, look, no, it, I don't it, believe Mike, that's the I've way. I've said this before. It's called... You educate them into it. You don't frighten it's them. It's called tough love. No. For child's What do you know about up? love? You've never I know been in love. About it. I you've know about been, it. No, you've never been in love. I do. I do. You've never been in love. When were you in love? Just because I've rejected love doesn't mean I don't know about love. You can't advise people on it, though. Love is wanting... You can't song. advise people on to tough be... love, though, can you? Of course I can advise people on tough love. If I say, you know, if I, for instance, saw a member of my family, and actually this did happen, yeah. getting plump and fat and oh, growing yeah. up fat, mm. I'd have words. And what did you say? You're getting fat. So this member of your family? I did, yeah. Yeah, and you don't look like that because you want to trap, you know, as many women as I did at your age, so you want to slim down a bit. Well, you said this to a, a male member of the to family. my nephew. Really? Who is now... Don't give his name. Who is now, I won't know. Who is now six <laughs> foot four inches... And you know, as lithe as you can he's possibly got an eating, see, has he got an eating disorder? No, he hasn't. No, no. But he was. <laughs> he's he sure was, he's a member of your family. Yeah, he was a typical teenager. There's no member of your family is taller than he, six foot. He was a typical. T- he is honestly six foot four. He was a typical. Well, what t- happened to you then? But, look, 
I'm not talking about me. It's a typical <laughs> teenager, and and in, for instance, in his graduation um, pictures yeah. at Newcastle University, right. he's got like three or four chins. You know, and I looked at that and I thought, this isn't good. Right. So well, I did especially if you're that, if, at that age, yeah, you don't yeah, want to be yeah. Fat, yeah. I did something about it. Now, the reason why he grew up to be six foot four inches tall is because my sister mm. is a home economist, right? And part of her job is taking pictures of food for adverts and all yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. But she knows what healthy food's all about. She's a dietitian as yeah. well and all this. And so, so he's she... her son. Absolutely. Right. So the problem is, of course... Uh, well, how whilst... do you get fat, then? Well, I was about to say, whilst your children are under your roof, mm. you can provide a diet for them which keeps them slim and trim. Oh, so when this they happened after students... he left? No, obviously, when no. they become students, they go away and start yeah, eating yeah. a lot of rubbish food. Or drinking a lot of eat. beer, maybe, if you've been Yeah, there. and drinking lots of beer and all that. Suddenly, your body changes shape. So mm. as soon as he got back home again for a year or two after he graduated, yeah. before he went and made his own way in life, he got really thin right. again, and, and he stayed thin, and, uh, and he's a fine boy we're all that, proud then? of. What was the secret? He, he simply changed his diet. Mm. He, he, he gave up... Uh, See, when I was at university, I hardly ate anything up. at all because I yeah. only had a fairly limited income. Yeah, I was and the same, really. I actually. spent most of it on drink. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I used and to you eat know what rolls I used to eat? and things. I used to yeah. eat uh, packet soup. I used yeah. to buy, like, chicken noodle soup, which yeah. would do me for a couple of days, mm. and a loaf of bread. Yeah. So I'd have bread and butter and chicken noodle soup. And then occasionally I'd have a Mars bar. Well, we had the same things every day. We used to rest, to... I spent all the rest of my money on drink. Yeah, I, I agree. We used to go to the pub all day and uh, occasionally go to a lecture or something, you know. <laughs> but then at about... <laughs> Yeah, this was um, so occasionally you would leave the lecture to go to the pub, wouldn't you? I would, yeah. I'd yeah. leave my books on the desk to make people think I was actually in the lecture, yeah. but not there, you yeah. know. And uh, and then we go to the pub, and then suddenly we think, oh god, it's ten o'clock, and the chippy shuts at ten thirty, right. and we go over the chip it's shop. Ten o'clock at night. Ten o'clock at night. Right. And we go over the chip shop. How could you afford to stay in the pub all that time? I don't know. I, I've never worked it out. But I tell you something. In one of the boozers I drank in Nottingham, I can remember it to this day. It was called the Grove Hotel on mm. Lenton Boulevard. Right. The beer was. 12 and a half p a pint. Really? Yeah. Blimey. And even in those days, my, you know, the grant I was getting from get, the government... So you got a grant from the government? No, got full so grant. you got taxpayers' money then? I did. Full oh, grant from the government. And that worked out at about seven quid a week. Yeah. So, I mean, seven quid a week bought a lot of 12 and a half p pints of beer. I bet it did, yeah. I mean, you had to pay lodgings and all that. It was about mm. three or four quid a week right. or something like that, you know. But mm. it's still, it, it still good. And, and what we used to do is we used to get to the chip shop just as he was closing the door every night and say, oh, just give us what you got left, you know, yeah. for, I don't know, 50p or right. something. And you got a load of chips... And then a few scrapings, and the scrapings of, out of the uh, the fryer. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and but no, and things like you know discarded sausage or something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was that was my diet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, he'd done well to put weight on while he was at university in that case, because most of us didn't actually bother to do that. Now, uh, coming up Ooh. in the next uh, hour, we've got the mm. Ask Porky uh, section, of course. Uh, yep. We did a bonus one on Friday night, but we've got loads more questions here, very good ones. Uh, if you've got any more that you want to add in, try and get them in under the wire. You can send them at the two mics to on Twitter uh, and put the hashtag Ask Porky. Now, I, I can't mm. remember. Remember if we manage to figure yeah. out what we're going to do the quiz on, because we're getting close. We'll have to tell the quiz masters what to give you the quiz on for Thursday. Well, we discarded Ireland, didn't we? We discarded Ireland, yeah. We yeah. decided against that. Yeah, and then did we say it was going to be the Bee Gees? Uh, no, we never said the Bee Gees. Oh, I see. We okay. want one of the Bee Gees. Um... What about Ian Gibb? <laughs> oh, right, OK, yeah, yeah. No, 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 there's no need to be... Uh... No Sorry, I just be, remembered uh, that. Sarcastic and all that. Uh, well, we'll think about that, and we'll BG. announce it in the next hour. Oh, we have to do it in the next hour, yeah, because yeah. only because I have to let the, uh, yes. the independent quiz master set yes. the questions. They need a couple of days, usually. OK, OK. You know, very, very complicated stuff. This is Talk Sport Extra Time. I'm Mike Graham. Uh, Mike Parry is here as well, of course. We've got loads to get on with. Uh, somebody called Simon has tweeted out the yeah. two likes. The quiz should be on Ducks or Bournemouth FC. Mm-hmm. Well, we've done Ducks, and yes. Bournemouth is a, a subject for some other time. But yes. what about Port- we can do one on Portsmouth, I suppose, well, given that uh, we're doing a show there. We could do the Saturday. Royal Navy, of course. We could do that. We've done, we've, I think we've done no, like, we naval battles or something like that, haven't we? No, no, we haven't. No. Have we not? No, no. You no, want no. to do the Royal Navy? I think we should do the Royal Navy. OK, definitely. We could do the Royal Navy. The Royal it's Navy, got a sort please. of Portsmouth theme, hasn't it? Yeah, and I'm an expert on it. OK. And I mean, a true expert on it. So, you know, I expect normal questions, not stupid questions. OK. Okay. All right. Now then, got a few here. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, here we go. Uh, what here we go. Say? Where? Right. What do you mean? Here we go. Well, here are Mr. TRFC. Yeah. Uh, he says, uh, "I Mike, really fascinated by your B-sides and your A-sides. Your song by Elton John was originally a B-side to a song called Take Me to the Pilot. 
in 1970. Take me to the pilot. Yeah, mm, yeah. I know that one. Bit odd that, but I remember your song, don't you? Your song by yeah. Elton John. My song is my my gift it's a is my bit, yeah. song, girl. It's a little bit funny, and it's for you. It's a little bit funny. This feeling yeah. inside. So I just have to give you the first line, and yeah. you can go. He's uh, that was his first ever hit record. What in my view? What your song? Yeah, um, yeah. You yeah, might I'm be sure, right. I'm sure it was. You yeah, might be right about right, that. Right. Okay. And it says that this is a guy called Ash. He says, uh, Mike, uh, fascinated by your theory about men talk to the dogs. I can confirm it's absolutely true. Well, certainly is in my case. That's what I do. Thank you very much indeed for Here's that one. one from uh, Becky. He says, I'm extremely yes. worried you guys are merging together to become the Mike. Yeah. Same sayings, what's the next, the same clothes, holidays together. Yeah. I can't imagine anything worse than going on a holiday with you. No, I wouldn't go on a holiday with you either, pal, but because you're stealing some of my expressions, you see, it means that your mind is, is, is slowly be, morphing can, into mine. I, c- I couldn't be more uh, horrified mm. that I've actually mm. stolen one of your uh, uh, expressions. Now, how no. about this from, uh, mm. from our Kev? Yes. He says, rough trade had Scritty Polity, the Buzzcocks, Cabaret Voltaire, the Smiths, Soul Asylum, Stiff Little Fingers, and lots of others. So they were a fantastic operation, Rough Trade. I so, so I wouldn't be boasting about a massive business opportunity I missed if I were you. It just shows how dumb you were, even at the age of 18. Well, the Smiths wasn't a massive business opportunity. No, 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 I'm saying that you didn't invest in that company no, when I didn't. you should have done. No, I didn't, because I didn't have the money. Because you're, you're a thickhead. No, and, I just and, didn't and have the money. It's typical of... I wanted of to, but I didn't know anybody with two grand at the time. Yeah, you know what that makes you? What does that make me? A loser. A loser. The, the perfect loser. Right. So, as, I mean, as, if I'd collected Krugerrands and been an odd yeah. child from the age of six, yes. I might have been uh, able to do it. Yeah, you might have been able to do it. Mm. As J.R. Ewing once said to Cliff Barnes, Mars, <laughs> that makes you the perfect loser. When he gave him a bottle of oil uh-huh. because he just sold him a huge swathe of land, right. which Barnes thought was going to yield, you know, millions of barrels of oil, when in fact uh, J.R. had actually gone and gerrymandered right. The uh, mineral deposit yes. reports. You do realise this was a fictional television yep. programme. Well, it doesn't matter, mate. I based a lot of my life on the, on the, the actions, the words, the sayings mm. and the thoughts of J.R. Ewing. Right. Now then, one here from Matt, and he says, uh, Hi, guys. Absolutely distressed by MG's attitude to your poor little dog that had epilepsy. Oh, really? I wish now that his dog, when it went missing, had been stolen. That's not very nice. Dog napping is only good enough for him. That's so, not very nice. You know, uh, but, uh, that's a shocking thing to say. Well, no, that's the sort of emotions you evoke in people yeah, when you start mocking my horrendous. little dog with epilepsy. Russ in Birkenhead has t- mm. uh, texted into 81089. He says, Porky, don't you feel obliged to pay your grant back as you're so financially wealthy at the moment, although maybe not permanently? I don't know what he means by that. Um, no, no, no. I don't think... Uh, you don't think you should pay it back? I don't think I should, because I think, you see... See, the reason I don't have to pay it back is because I proved for the first time mm. that without studying books all day long, you can go to an education of higher... Uh, a, a, an establishment of higher education... Yeah. And become a better person. Yeah. I became a much better person. Yeah, funded by the taxpayer. Funded by the taxpayer, but it's worth it because I became one of Britain's leading journalists. Um, <laughs> what, are you, what are you laughing I've got at? a funny story to tell you, actually, about one of your leading journalists. Oh, yeah. I had lunch with one of our former, uh, um, uh, shall we say, compadres. Former colleagues, yeah. yeah and your Excellent. name came up and he sent you his best and everything else. That's I'm not going to give his name away. That's very kind but of he was recounting a story mm. of uh, when you were all in Paris together. Oh, yes. Chasing Mick Jagger. Oh, that's right. Who yeah. at the time was, I think, romancing... Uh, oh, What's his name? Brian Ferry's uh, girlfriend, Jerry Hall, right? No, it wasn't actually. It was the it was the opposite. He's probably forgotten now. What happened was she ran off. Jerry yeah. Hall ran off with Robert Sangster, oh, the right. racehorse. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, beca- because she'd found Mick was philandering with women in Paris. Mm. So she ran off to um, to the Caribbean. Right. We all went to Paris yeah. to find Mick, yeah. and then followed Mick to the Caribbean. That's right. Yeah. Well, before that story of you following him to mm. the Caribbean. He told the story of how he and this photographer ended up in this nightclub right, until yeah. about four or five in the morning, right. where suddenly Jagger appeared. He did. Uh, and they went off running mm. down the street after mm. him. And he said he called you up because you'd mm. gone to bed, which I thought was her horrifying story. No, so you I had, remember, he, said, I, I, he said you were in bed. He hasn't had to wake you up. Well, my memory is of being in the club. I saw Jagger come down the stairs. He no, had, well, he, he had uh, black uh, sunglasses on. Well, he says he had, a, he had to ring you up because you'd left maybe, early. Maybe, maybe it was another night. But yeah. anyway, yeah, go on. Yeah, no, that was just the story. Oh, so oh, very funny. oh no, no, I, I remember how I remember it. Um, we'd been searching for Jagger for two or three nights, yeah. and the sort of clubs he uses. Or the sort of clubs that we now express horror at in London. Mm. You go in and say, well, could we have a table for four, yeah. please? Yes, you and can. About 10,000 quid for the table. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah, about 5,000 francs for the yeah. table in those days. Mm. And, and you had to buy a whole bottle of gin, mm. but you got your mixers free yeah, and all yeah. this kind of stuff. Right. So we were running up huge costs on right. behalf of the Daily Express, the Daily Mail, right. 
And every, I, I'm not sure who he worked for. I think it was the. I think it was don't the give Daily his name Mail. Away. No, no, don't give his name away. It's Daily Mail. But anyway, <laughs> I, I maybe it was a different night, but right. I distinctly remember um, Jagger coming down the stairs uh, um, in sunglasses. The mm. first time I'd ever seen somebody wearing sunglasses in a in a nightclub. Yeah. And then he only got halfway down the stairs. He saw all of us. We all left up from the table. Right. Perhaps and a bit he too t- soon. He took flight. He took flight. Went upstairs. We ran upstairs. Yeah. We had a load of cars waiting outside right. because we were only going to spend an hour in this nightclub and then go on to another right. one. We and he said he kept stepping on the photographer's feet well, to stop him from somehow following him, which seems like an odd thing to do. Well, I don't know about that, but I, well, what I do know is we got into the cars, we followed Jagger's car, and the only word of French that I knew was vite, vite, right. vite, right. which means it's quick. go quicker. Yeah. Vite, vite. Right. And this this uh, this French <laughs> taxi driver was... Oh, yeah, he was telling me about this, doing handbrake turns and all Doing handbrake turns, going over pavements, yeah. through red lights, and all we kept doing was bunging like him... Like scene from the Bourne Identity. It was, and we were just bunging him 100, um, you Frank, know, uh, Frank notes, notes yeah. and saying, you know, vite, vite, vite. Right, <laughs> that's right. right. And he Great kept us around, and then we got what a to, way to make a living. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And then we got to one of these fantastic French uh, apartments in the Endrossement, or oh, whatever yeah. it's called. You well, know, the arrondissement. Arrondissement. That's the arrondissement. That's well, which one? I don't know. But well, it's going to be the fifth arrondissement. I don't, I don't know. Seventh. But this huge black gate clanged shut. You right. know what I mean? And that was it. We couldn't go any further. Right. And he was inside, and we were outside. And so that was the end of the game, I'm afraid. Yeah, fantastic. But Baz Bamig's boy, you remember right. Baz? Yeah, well, that's another name you've given out. Yeah, well, he was on the Sun at the time. I now write a column in the Daily Mail. But um, he he fooled us all the next morning by going off to uh, Charles de Gaulle. Oh, yeah. And he got on the Concorde. Hmm. Same Concorde that Jagger was on, going oh, to, so they uh, had, uh, to the Caribbean. Yeah, so they well, obviously knew where he was going. Now, yeah. how about this from Woodenhead? He's tweeted out the two mics. Porky complaining about scroungers one minute, then telling everyone how he spends his student grant on mm. booze the next. Mm. Hashtag hypocrite. Mm. He's got a point. No, not at all. As I've just explained, I did not waste my student years... Mm. Because I learned a lot about life. Yeah. That made me a valuable member of society. As I so said, as far became, as you're concerned, the taxpayers' money was well invested. Oh, well invested. I yeah. became a leading newspaper journalist, got to the very, very um, height of the greasy pole of uh, Didn't they come journalism. after you to repay them if you didn't, since you didn't stay out for the, for the whole course, though? If you, only, if you dropped out, didn't they come after you for that? No, because they only paid you a year's money at a time. Yeah, yeah. Didn't they? No, you, I know. You had the same, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. You got I mean, full did, grant. I, yeah, yeah, I did. How many years did, did you do? Two. I did too, yeah. Yeah, well, they only give you a grant at the start of each year. Yeah, I only, the only reason I think I got a full grant was because my sister and I were going at the same time. Oh, I see, right, OK. Yeah. I don't know how I got a full grant, but I did, but anyway, that was Well, okay. you must have qualified for it on the grounds of penury. Yeah, that's right, yeah, it would yeah. be something like that, yeah. Mm. I think my father was self-employed, so I thought, yeah, you know, I think he had the advantage of sort of cooking the books, I suppose, yeah. I don't know. Oh, well, really? But, you, uh, just, you, tell, you say that the crime yeah. family was going more than one generation? No, no, the no. The Perry no. crime family? No, 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 we don't have any crime in our family, honestly. Well, you're always it, confessing to committing crime. No, 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 I don't, I don't. Uh, listen, I need to tell you about um, some new research I've come across, OK? Because okay? it, it really is fascinating. Stuff, Have you seen okay? the time, though, first of all? Well, well, OK, all right, all right. Well, I'll, I'll, well, I'll, well hold on to it, right? What's I it would, about? I'd, well, it's fascinating stuff. I have found out now for the first time mm. why human beings wear makeup, right. but animals don't. Have you? Mm. What, because they can't put it on? Because of the no, 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 it's nothing like that at all. It's nothing mm. like that at all. No, OK. I mean, I mean... All right, well, I'll tell you what, hold that thought, and yeah. we'll find out why uh, animals don't wear makeup. Coming up next on Talk Sport. Good idea. Talk Sport on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. Freedom for sport. OK. So you're a bit of an aficionado of musicals, aren't you? Because you said you go to them sometimes in the West yeah, End. Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm... Have you ever seen West Side Story? Uh, no, but I've probably seen it on... T- oh, no, no, I'm confusing it with Marlon Brando's I Could Have Been a Contender. Yeah, that was on the waterfront. That was on the waterfront, And it wasn't yeah. a musical. No, it wasn't a musical. Easy no. to confuse. Great, great film, though. Great yeah. film. Yeah. No, the West Side Story was the one about the gangs of dogs. Huh? <laughs> West Side Story was the one about the gangs of dogs. Gangs of <laughs> dogs? I don't think so. What was the best line in uh, in uh, On the Waterfront? On the Waterfront? Yeah. Well, apart from I Could Have Been a Contender yeah. instead of a bum, which yeah. is what I am. Yeah, it's what I am. Yeah. The other one was... Uh, what did I get out of it? A one-way ticket to uh, where? Uh, Palookaville. Well, it's it? a one-way ticket to Palookaville. Yeah. And um, Carl uh, Malden's nose yeah. starred in that, didn't he? It, it did. That's right. Yeah, it was great. Film. Now, what are you going to tell me about uh, Listen, uh, what I want animals to tell you is and this. makeup? Well, this is amazing. It's about the. Uh, it's it's a new research document I've read. Yeah. And it's about the difference between us and animals, right? Okay. Now, um, any animal particularly, or just well, generally? chimpanzees really, because okay. they're the nearest thing to human beings, apart from octopuses, apart of from course. Octopuses, yeah. Yeah, but um, for instance, um, human beings go to extraordinary lengths, right, yeah. 
to reassure ourselves we're not like other animals. Right. We have to be distinctive. We have to be humanoids mm. and not from the sort of ape community and all that kind of stuff. That's why we put makeup on. Uh-huh. Makeup is not a thing that chimpanzees go in for, right? Well, why? I mean, it's blindingly obvious, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, why yeah, would yeah. anybody do research on this? Beca- because we've got to make ourselves look as different from animals as possible, OK? Right. OK. And it's all down to the fact that we fear death so badly. Mm. Every human being who's ever born... From well, you definitely born, do fear death. I don't fear death at all. Yeah, you do. I do not fear death. You're always on no, about... No, no, You're no. always on about no, death. No, I don't fear death at all. In fact, I quite welcome death because, to me, it's a it's a new bag. Mm. You know what I mean? It's something I've not been into before, and I do believe that you kick on. I read only well, the you other mean day. Believe there's life after death. Well, there's something. There's got to be something. Why? But I mean, but I mean, and, and look, I'm 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 very at one with my mortality. Are you? Got to remember, I only had thirty six hours to live at one stage yeah, when I, I was know. in a hospital. Well, so you say. Only one third of my heart I works now. I don't believe now. any of this. Actually. Only three percent of us it working then. Only three percent of my heart was working. I was. Well, you so, can't live if, you, if was, you've only. If that yeah, was true, yeah, the three percent of your heart was working, you'd yeah. be dead. You I was be, so be lucky to pull through. It was unbelievable. So I've looked mortality in the face. I've smiled. I've laughed, and I've turned around and walked back into life. If you see what I mean. Right. But what I'm saying is, we, we all we all apparently fear death. So, but so how what, about uh, why do yeah. m- more women wear makeup than men? Then, well, what I does don't the know. study say about that? Well, I mean, I don't wear makeup. Well, lots of men do these days. Do they? Yeah, and do I you think anyone cre- wears makeup. Well, fam- I'm not talking fam- about people on TV. Famous people, because the, the more fa- again, this is what this research document says: the mm. more famous you are, the more you fear death. Because being um, famous and having a life like, say, Michael Jackson or something like that, yeah. means you have such a superior position in the living world, yeah. you do not want to give it up right. for whatever comes next. Mm. No, what I was going to say to you was, how big must heaven be? When I read the other day, how you, big? Yeah, you know the Milky Way. Yeah, you know the Milky Way. Well, I know it. Yeah, people talk about it. I all know that. of it. I've seen it in the sky. Do you know? No, it is a hundred million light years across. Yeah, well, I know it's quite big. Well, do, can you ma- just try and imagine a hundred million light no, years I can't across? Really. No, I can't. So that means light travelling for a hundred million years. Yeah. How far is that? Well, it's, it's hundred million light years away. It's not incalculable. It's, it's in- hundred million light years. But that's how big the Milky Way is. Yeah. The Milky Way is only part of like a, a universe. Yeah. Down in the universe. Well, what makes across. you think that heaven is up there? Well, it's not at the down, well, heaven's not down here, is it? Well, I don't know. Well, it's not. It's not an actual finite do you know, entity. Do you know? So heaven is not necessarily something which you can measure, if it indeed it exists. Do you know there is a theory, which I came across a few years ago, mm. which quite terrified me, yeah. that actually heaven is here on earth. This is heaven, and what happens next is hell. How about that? What, you mean everybody goes to hell? Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, the, well, that's the, interesting. The, the, that we're all... In, that's very existential, that. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah. the, the best part of your existence is what you've got now. Right. Everything else well, is... Well, surely, if everybody goes to yeah. the same place, then mm. it's not that different from where you've been. Uh, Do you know what I mean? No, I don't get that one. Well, if you were considering... No, something else. Well, if you were considering, for example, that, you know, the good people go to heaven and mm. the bad people go to hell and yes. it's all full of fire and brimstone and the devil's over his pitchfork and all that, yeah. if everybody, either good or bad, is going to the same place, mm. then surely the people make the place what it is, so it wouldn't actually be that bad. Yeah, well, I don't know the answer to that one. I just know that surely I can't end up in the same place as Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin, can I? Mm. Because I'm a good person and they were bad people, yeah. so I don't want to be in the same room as them. No, but I mean, my I mean? point is, is that if you're already on the earth with them... Mm. Then, then what you're describing is what would then be hell. Mm. If everybody's going there, then mm. it would be the same. Well, look, I'd like to think about that. Also, I, uh, my biggest problem is if I'm going to heaven, which I believe I should, because mm. I've been a good Christian citizen you have not on at earth. All. Yes, I have. Absolutely not. Yes, I have. You've lied and cheated and betrayed happens, your way through life. What happens when you get there and somebody comes up to you you don't actually like, yeah. but, you, but you, you know, was a relative and mm. you're supposed to have liked them on earth, yeah. and you don't want anything to do with them? Right. Do you get the opportunity to say push off? Well, no. I think you'd have to then come clean and say, actually, you know, mm. I didn't like this person yeah. when I was on earth, so maybe I'm not such a good Christian after all. Well, I'm not sure about that. Anyway. Look, well, I want to go into this theory because, uh, you know, you can't keep going on about the time. Yeah, it's going on, up. I now then, mentioned the time. It allows our fear of death to put makeup on, OK? When we use cosmetics, it's no coincidence that such efforts are almost always directed towards reducing our resemblance to other animals. Yeah. Right? But, I mean, I don't wear makeup, so this doesn't apply to me. It, it does. doesn't apply to you either. Well, it applies well, it, it applies to a lot of uh, human beings, OK? Yeah. And, and the other part of this, the other part of this is it is all about fear of death. Um, now, protection against fear of death. This has come down through the generations of civilization. Did you get like, this from the insurance company? No, like the Greeks. Oh yeah, the Greeks and the Romans. Yeah. Fear Where of do you the, find this stuff. Hang on, protection against fear of death is self-esteem. Oh yeah. So subjects who are told they are clever or above average respond less fearfully to frightening stimuli. What? 
frightening stimuli. What are you talking about? I'm telling you, this is this is this is a new research paper. This seemed to be big news for nervous travellers and phobics. Okay, if self-esteem also diminishes anxiety, then we should actually ban things like Valium, 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 the Valium. <laughs> we should start banning Valium. And what we should do is, what we should do is... I mean, if you're going to read this report, at yeah, least read yeah, it yeah, first. Yeah. We should ban Valium, Valium and, yeah. and psychiatrists... Have you ever taken Valium? No, of course not. Why not? I've never needed it. And psychiatrists, instead of dishing out Valium, should be reprogrammed to tell people with these problems... Um, or to put some uh, slap on. Never mind cognitive behavioural cognitive. therapy. Cognitive yeah. behavioural therapy. Yeah. You should now um, indulge in cognitive boasting therapy. Boasting therapy. You should go around telling people how great you are. Which is what you do. I don't do that yeah, at you all. you do. You should go around telling people how great you are and that would take the place of antidepressants okay. and could forever banish antidepressants. Well, I, that not, is the theory. I'm not against uh, uh, people... That's the theory. People sort it's of a bit bigging, complicated, that, uh, really, It is. It? I'm not against mm. the idea of people mm. bigging themselves up as long as it's... But I think people fear... That mm. I'm, I'm always slightly suspicious of people who big themselves up because that, for me, masks a kind of inferiority complex. You know, you've got to make people think that you're brilliant at something I, I, I don't in agree. order to make you feel better about yourself. I don't agree whatsoever. What I would say is that people... Are big themselves up are full of confidence, borne out by their ability to get things done no, in life. No, quite often they're not, though. That's what I'm saying. Borne out by their ability no, to get things done Now, listen to this from Becky. This is a great one. Right. She says, my goldfish gave up trying to wear makeup. He couldn't find any waterproof concealer or oh, blusher, oh, and the cats just don't care. Oh, 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 very funny. Well, I mean, you haven't followed well, that up, have you? What this do you idea, mean? You said that, you know, animals can't put makeup no, on. No, they can't. Well, of course they can't. Everybody knows that. Yeah, American women spend more money on cosmetics, get this, than the United Nations spends on all its agencies and funds, i.e. its total budget. Yeah. By the age of 18, the average American youth will have viewed depictions of 16,000 murders and 200,000 violent acts what? on television yeah. or on screens, on laptops or whatever. Mm. Oh, no, that's just on the television. And by the time you factor in computer games, the total is far, far higher... Small wonder that psychologists are now saying that the young are becoming blunted and without empathy. What's that got to do with makeup? Because it's all about the fear of death. Well, what's that? That's that and you, put so make, you put makeup on. You put no. You put makeup on to remove yourself from looking like an animal, like a chimpanzee, um, in order to allay your fear of death. How about right. that? That's did a you, very interesting report. Did you um, somewhat wear makeup when you were on TV? Uh, yes, I did, yeah. Because I did once. I mean, only once, I mm. think, it happened to me. I went up mm. to Scotland and I had to go to a meeting, funnily enough, with some business I was involved yep. in. And while I was up there, I went on Newsnight Scotland. They wanted to do something yes. like that. And they put proper makeup, full makeup on me, right? Yes. And um, I quite liked the way it looked, actually. Yeah. And I thought, this is great. And the woman who was doing it said, well, why do you think women wear makeup? You know, it does actually make you look better. Yeah. And I was going out to meet my friend, uh, my nightclub owning friend that night. Right. And I just left it on. Yes. And so I went to this nightclub with all this makeup on. And the results were remarkable. Yes. Well, in what respect? Well, in the fact that, you know, an awful lot of women wanted to talk to me and couldn't believe how old I was because I was wearing makeup. Really? And the fact that I was wearing makeup for them was actually quite an interesting thing. Oh, did they know you were wearing makeup? Well, I told them I was. No, oh, I see, yeah. And did you and, tell them why? Because um, you know, I was a TV star. That's well, no, why I didn't kept know. It on, I didn't say it? that. No, I was just. Of course like, it is. That's why you kept well, it on when you're a nightclub. Came Look, up. I've got makeup on. Hey, guess why? Because I'm, you know, I'm not a, a cross dresser <laughs> or anything. I've just been on TV. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's no, what you were trying to no, say. I did it as an experiment. Experiment. Yeah. But funny enough, you'd say, I, I used to have makeup applied every night. Yeah. And I always left it on to go home. Really? Only because it took far too long to take it off. Didn't it then come off on the pillow, though? Oh, no, when I got home, I'd have a shower. Oh, OK. And then get it off, you see oh. what I mean? But, oh, okay. I mean, what I'm saying is, in the old studio itself... So imagine if you'd been stopped driving home one night. No, I didn't drive home. Makeup. No, I didn't drive home. I used to get the last train home. Oh, it was okay. the easiest way to get home. So you'd get on a train with makeup on? Yeah, trying that to get out of London at, uh, at sort of 11.30 at night is a mm. nightmare uh, out of the West End yeah. because of the traffic and all that. Yeah, yeah. So I used to jump on a train, literally, and then, mm. boom, get to Victoria, get the last train home. And uh, But if they try to take it off with um, wet wipes and all that, it's mm. so messy because yeah. it, all, it all becomes gungy yeah, yeah. and runs down your face and yeah. all that, so you just leave it. Yeah, quite. I totally agree with now, you How about one. this from Mark, who says, right? as the top female researcher Belinda Carlisle stated heaven is a place on earth oh baby do you know what i'm worth oh heaven is a place on earth that wasn't I like a cue that. for you to sing didn't she also write a song called baby leave a candle for me uh, i don't know baby Maybe please a leave a candle for me Why are you singing that? because it's a song i remember well because it reminded me of kind of was it called leave the light on by any chance baby leave the light on for me yeah it could be leave the yeah. light on well, leave, I thought it was leave a candle no. but uh, you know it, it it gave me the feeling of that old sort of um 
you know, sort of... I know you're going to sing from, again. Don't no, sing No, no, I won't sing again. From the 18th time. or 19th century, where, you know, you've been on a terrible mission or something, you come home, you know, and the boat suddenly docks. Another and fantasy. Like, yeah, and, and, and you go up to the old house where you lived and you wonder if your girl is still there and you always said to her, leave a light on for me, yeah. you know, leave a camera What, you mean like that window. sailor that you used to, whose girlfriend yeah. you used to uh, um, run around with when he was out at sea? Oh, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think, think so. so. But this it was, is, it was uh, leave a light on for me meant, you know, put a candle in the window, and if I'm coming up the path and I see the candle on at the window, I will knock on your door. And if I don't see the candle in the window, I will dear walk on God. by. Dear God, you've lost that? the plot now. Mm. Now, ask Porky coming up next on Talk okay. Sport. Talk Sport on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. The enduring home of... Vision, and uh, it's the quiz coming up uh, on mm-hmm. Thursday night yep. as well. I'm um, here to help. I'm here to help. Yeah, and he is here to help. And uh, we've got a whole section uh, of, uh, of uh, great questions here for you. And uh, As ever, what we'll try and do is run through as many of them as we can. Uh, try and be as uh, um, reasoned as you can be with the answers, but uh, try mm-hmm. not to dwell on too many of them, because otherwise we won't get through too many. Okay. First one is from Matt. Mm. He says, I've moved to New York, I've been here four months and my girlfriend has just turned up. How do I get rid of her? Uh, well, if I were you, mate, I, you'd just have to ignore her, I'm afraid. I know that sounds a bit harsh, but the problem is that you are now in your new safe environment. You're building a new life around you. What you have to say is, look, it's like a force shield around me. You're no longer part of my life. I'm sorry. The thing about New York is, if you haven't been there before, it is such a dramatic change in circumstances, atmospheric and otherwise. Your intelligentsia changes and you don't want to include any of your former life. Not being rude to your girlfriend, but she's part of your former life. She can't be part of your new life. So you just ignore her, basically. Okay, I'm afraid well, so. Uh, yeah, fra- no, just some messages saying, please don't contact me. Uh, you know, I'm no longer... Uh, what's the person I was? No, I was is, no longer is the, the person, person I was. I was. Uh, here's one from Paul. Uh, he said, if you were still the top man at the FA, mm. what changes would you make to football and why? Uh, well, that's too that's too extensive to um, to, to detail. Well, give Let's, us maybe one thing that okay, you would okay. change. Let me tell you, I'm very supportive of the FA. They have a massive job to do. They have to look after the amateur game and the professional game. And of course, the professional game is dominated by the Premier have League. You've been to see them recently, we're, or something. Uh, excuse me. Excuse have you me. Been to see we're, we're, with, a, with a vast amount of, of money that Sorry, they some kind of contract put into it. it. Sorry? Are you trying to get some kind of contract? No, 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 no. What I would say is, if I was uh, running the FA, I would get together with Mr Scudamore from the uh, Premier League and with Gordon... um, Banks? uh, No, no, no. uh, Hill? No, no, the head of the uh, Professional Football Association, BFA, Gordon... Oh, Gordon Taylor. Very old friend of mine, Gordon Taylor. Oh, you can't remember Um, his name. And we would hammer out a, a, a situation to make sure that the flow of money to very young footballers, as young as 16 or 17, was restricted massively because it ruins their lives. And And by the time they're 18 or 19, they're out of football. Why is it Mr Scudamore and Gordon Taylor? Well, because Mr Scudamore deserves that sort of respect for having created the Premier League. No, no, Gordon's a great guy. Gordon's a great guy. Good friend of mine. Why do you call him Gordon Taylor, then? Well, because I call him Gordon, and I don't know him as well as I know uh, know him better. I know Mr Scudamore. Oh, okay, all right. All right, next one from uh, Frazzle, Mm. who says, you've written a number of literary classics about other stars, yes. but why no autobiography? Well, I'm going to write my autobiography when I come to the end of my professional career, mm. but there is so much more to do. I mean, for instance, this Saturday we're on the stage in Portsmouth, after that we're on the stage in the West End. We still have things to do. We're making a video this year of one of our live shows. That's going to be on sale at Christmas. Sorry if I'm plugging all this, but this is exactly what's happening. Yeah. And then, of course, Mike and I have great broadcasting plans for the future. When all that is done, when I become once again, or maybe for the first time, the king of the air waves, then I shall write my book. OK, well, you've got some time to go then. It may you never what? happen. It may never happen. Uh, here's one from John. Uh, he says, Mike, what is the longest campaign of rat-like cunning you have ever run and what were its eventual rewards? OK, my longest campaign of rat-like cunning is to convince people that, uh, A, they do not have to go through the academic machinery yes. of um, junior school, senior school, university job, that's the wrong way uh, around. You shouldn't do it. You should get to junior school, senior school, 16 or 17. Make up your mind what you want to do and go and do it. Don't be bullied by your parents into going onto that conveyor belt of university. Is that what you feel you were then? I feel I was, yeah. But, uh, bullied with, by your parents? No, no, by the system. Uh-huh. By the system. Because uh-huh. I went to a very good school, the King's School, Chester. You, it... you, you, you were told that's what you're doing. You yeah. didn't have any choice. Nobody uh-huh. ever said to you, do you want to be a bricklayer? Mm. Do you want to be a plumber? Do you want to, because you have uh, artistic tendencies, do you want to go to an art college? No, no, you go to university. 
university, get a degree. Well, you wouldn't have done any of those things Economics anyway. or law. I might have done. I might no. have done. Yes, well, you, I, wouldn't I, have not, you would have not wanted to do anything that was, in your words, working class. I, I would like to have left at 18 and gone straight into newspapers, instead of which I, I foolishly... Well, you could have done that. I foolishly... Uh, you uh, could have done that. No, I couldn't, because the whole system geared you to going on to university. Mm. And, and so I lost a, a couple of years uh, of uh, newspaper experience, which meant that uh, even though I became the youngest news editor in Fleet Street, because I was so good at what I did, it could have happened even earlier. OK. okay. Yeah. Uh, next question is from Rich. What period of history would you travel back to and why? I do love Dickensian England. Uh, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I think the values and the morals are there. And I, and I also... The values and the morals? Values and the morals well, are there. sending children to work. No, no, no. Sending no, no. Out chimneys. Yeah, but hang on. That was, that was the era in which the great reforms came in to stop all that happening, OK? Dickensian moved into Victorian, mm. right? And that's when we, uh, we changed When everything. children were seen and not heard. Uh, when children were seen and not heard, absolutely. So all I'm saying is that whilst uh, a lot of people say that, oh, you know, life was tough and harsh in those days, it was the start of the great reforms, which made this country the leading and most civilised country in the world and we spread our civilization around the world. I'd have been very proud to have been a member of the British aristocracy in those days. Typical. Wouldn't, wouldn't want to be a, like, you know, a sort of peasant or anything, but I would, have been, I would like to have been a member of the aristocracy. Michael says this, one of my neighbours keeps putting his recycling in my bin. It's yeah. now full of empty packets of lean ham bottles of Pinot. Should I confront the plank? Uh, no, I wouldn't. If I were you, I'd confront the local authority and say, bring us some more bins because everybody should throw all their litter out all the time. And uh, this... Uh, nonsensical idea of collecting uh, bins only every two, three and possibly even four weeks now is a calumny on the British taxpayer and should be done away with. Very sorry to hear that um, that rather portly chap, Eric Pickles, is now going off to the House of Lords, I think, because he's, he's, he's been bounced out of the government. He was the man who said every Englishman uh, should have the right to empty his uh, chicken ticker misala containers misala. yeah into into their bin mm. on a Saturday night and have it collected every Monday or Tuesday morning. I agree. Now this is a bit of a risque question. Right. This one comes from Gazman. Okay, uh, he says uh, if you have you have one wish and it's a choice of a night of full sex uh, with Maria Sharapova yeah. or Everton winning the league. Yeah. Well, you see, you can't answer that question in its entirety. It w- it would you'd have to measure it up to what else you'd been doing that week. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Why? So, well, because uh, it, it, the point is, well, I if, don't think you have to put it into a real situation. No, no, no. I, I will put it into a real situation. I would say it's the impossible question because you have to balance it against what else is going on in your life. Mm. How much recent success your football club has had? How much recent success you've had yeah. with lovely young ladies? Right. You know, who well, may have been a flo- no-brainer. Then, who, who may have been flocking I to mean, your, your door? Your record with young. Young ladies is about as bad as Everton. Who may it? have been flocking to your door. Yeah. You've got to take it in context, and therefore I'm not going to insult Miss Sharapova mm. by saying I'd turn you down in favour of a football club, right. and I'm not going to be disloyal to my football club yeah. by saying I would well, if I renounce you, to you for the pleasures of the flesh, right. even if it was with one of the tastiest ladies in the world. Yeah, but if I was to say to you yeah. that Everton last had a trophy in, what, 1995? Yeah. That's not dissimilar to your success with women, isn't it? Uh, I'm not going to answer that question because it's a brutal generalisation <laughs> trying to demean me and belittle me when I'm trying to help the rest of the world and all you can do is make smutty jokes right. about my personal life. OK, here's one from Matt. He uh, says, I think my dog is up to nefarious deeds in my neighbourhood and running his own dog pack. Mm. How can I put a stop to it? Well, I'll tell you what I would do, mate. I'd do what I think we should do to all dogs here and I'd put a chip in his bonds and therefore, uh, one of these days, very, very soon indeed, you'll be able to track your dog's uh, movements by satellite, find out exactly where he's gone, OK? And when they come around and accuse you, the police, the uh, dog police or whatever they're called... Yeah, the dog the, police. ...that your dog's so been called. leading, you know, a gang of, uh, of uh, out-of-control dogs, you'll have all the proof and evidence to say, no, it was not my dog. That's the way to do it. Technology can beat that one. Now, I don't know how this one has slipped through the, yeah. uh, the editing process, yeah. but uh, this is from John. Uh, he says, has old MG ever truly thanked you for dragging him up by his bootstraps and saving his career? Um, not to my knowledge, but then again, he wouldn't, because as far as MG's concerned, everything he's done in life, he's done himself. He forgets the times I've rescued him from pulling him up off the floor of the bar in Costello's in New York. I don't remember that. To piling money in his pocket when the boy was destitute. You did do to that. To actually rescuing his career when he thought it was all at an end, and I introduced him to broadcasting because his print career had run out, because he'd run out of words himself. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, mostly untrue. Uh, now, we've only got time for a couple more quick mm-hmm. ones. Ian says, if Porky was given the chance to relive one year of his life yeah. again, which year would that be and why? 
It would be... Presumably not the, the year when you nearly died. No, it would be the year that I nearly died. No, that was an experience you wouldn't want to go through again. I think it would be the year of 1980, which was the year I made the leap from provincial newspapers, the Birmingham Mail, to national newspapers, which was the Daily Express. That was the start of my uh, senior editorial career in newspapers. And it's been a pleasure and a joy to have worked in that industry ever since. OK. Uh, and then uh, let's see if I can choose yeah. one of these out of the uh, the last ones. Mm. Here's one from uh, from Ben. Yeah. He says, I consider myself a man of the people, but I don't nice. have multiple homes. Does this mean I'm not? Uh, no, you can be a man of the people and have multiple homes. The thing is that if you have multiple homes, it means you have multiple cleaners, so you're employing people. If you have multiple homes, it means that somebody's had to build them, mm. so you've actually financed the building of those homes, yeah. so you've been actually keeping bricklayers in, uh, in work, floor layers, carpet layers. But what about people layers. who can't find a home for themselves? Well, I feel very sorry for people who can't find a home for themselves, but my advice is always this. If you're not winning, it's because you're not trying hard enough. And uh, if you don't have a home, I, I, I have great sympathy with you in the sense that, you know, homes have become beyond the reach of many people and many jobs. But it has to be the ultimate, the ultimate target and the ultimate prize for trying to do something extraordinary in life and get yourself that home. Good luck to you, and I wish you all the very best. And if I could give away a few homes to people who so need to sell them, like I would. Queen now. I would, I would. Unbelievable. But I can't because... Rules don't allow it. Oh, they don't allow it. No, mm. okay. Marvellous. Thank you very much indeed. That's another okay. edition of Ask Porky. Yep. We'll do the same yep. uh, same time next week. Yep. Uh, if you didn't get yours read out, don't worry. Uh, we'll add it to the pile of, of, of possibles that we might use uh, in uh, future weeks. Coming up next, uh, we've got loads more to do. Don't forget, it's Porky Vision tomorrow night right here on Talk. <laughs> It's um, Phil Linnett who sang that, was yeah. Irish, yeah. and and he remembers that being sung to him as a kid. You oh, know, really? it, yeah. it, was a, it was an Irish folk song. Great song. A bit like Danny I saw, Boy or I saw something Thin like that. I at Wembley, uh, really? Wembley Empire Pool. Yeah, yeah they yeah. were the, bizarrely, I think they were the support band for somebody like Backman Turner Overdrive. Right. Oh, God, when I was yeah. about 12 or 13, yeah. Ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, they were awful. Ch- cherry the Thin Lizzy were brilliant. Yeah. Now, listen to this from Darren, uh, who's right. tweeted, uh, Porky Corleone going to heaven with all the crimes he's confessed to. The pitchfork is being freshly sharpened. Uh, he goes, hashtag well, Don Parry. I think you have to weigh up and balance in life the good against the bad. I've done much, much, much more good in life than anything bad. Have Believe you? me. Believe me. Well, all right. I guess we won't be the yeah. judge of that. You will yeah. be judged by your uh, maker, as, uh, as they say in these, uh, in these spots. Now, um, there was a big story we talking about uh, mm. the drinking earlier on. Uh, big hey, story listen, this week. Just before we talk about yeah. that, sorry. Do you know what it is tonight? Do you know what game's on tonight? The Europa League final. Unbelievable. If Unbelievable. Everton could have been playing in that, couldn't they, if they hadn't been beaten well, I have to by Dnipro. Did say. they get beaten by... No, it was Dynamo Key either beat them, wasn't it? Well, it was a group game, wasn't it? And uh, we just didn't qualify no, through a, the no, group. No, it was a knockout no, game. That's right, it was, no, actually, it was. No, they got was, into, yeah. like, the quarterfinals, didn't we got, they? We got hammered away from home. Yeah. We thought by we'd Dynamo be able Kiev. to... Yes, exactly. Because remember, you were going to go. Yes, exactly. At one point, you were suggesting that you and I should go out to Kiev... I did. ...and watch it. I did, I did. But never mind, now West Ham could be in the Europa League next season because Everton have dodged a bullet there, haven't they? No, they are in the League. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. Well, they have to have a qualifying game. Yeah, they have to have a qualifying game, but they've accepted entry into it but, on the, but on the Ever- Fair Play saying, League. But Everton have, uh, have dodged that bullet because oh, the, I'm the, delighted. the Fair Play Award would have meant that they would have had a game on the 2nd of July. Oh, I am absolutely delighted. Mm. And, and, and again, Mr Gold talking tonight about, you know... Mr what a, Gold. Yeah, what a great future David West Gold. Ham have got. You know, they got a new manager coming, they've got mm. a new stadium. Tell you what, the one thing that could completely shatter their season next yeah. season is a long run in the Europa well, League. What if they have to play on the 2nd of July and exactly. they haven't got a manager yet? Exactly. I mean... It's yeah. not very far away. It's not very far it's four away. Four weeks away, I think. It's four weeks away. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. So you're going to be yeah. watching the Europa League tonight, then? Uh, June, July. It's about five weeks away, isn't it? Say again. Sorry. Are you going to be watching the Europa League tonight? Well, it's. Uh, why, is, why does that stunned you into hang on, silence? Hang, hang on, because I'm just thinking. It's in Warsaw. It's in Warsaw. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, there is such yeah. a thing as television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll I'm be on thinking. TV. Yeah, well, you don't have to go to Warsaw. Well, we, we may have a look. We may have a look. But you know, it's always bitter. It's a bitter pill to um, to try and watch a game where your team could have been in the final. And uh, anyway, listen, um, we're only talking about football, really, to distract mm. ourselves from um, your activities today. Why? Why? Why distract yourself? Taking pictures of bottles of wine and glasses of wine and putting them around, showing off again about your no, drinking I treated, capacity. No, I, I, just, I, I think I, it's a disgrace. No, I went out for lunch today. No big secret. And I was waiting for a friend of ours that uh, we were talking about earlier, mm. and he was a bit late because mm. uh, you know he had to get across town. And so I was sitting at the bar and I was having a nice glass of prosecco because it was a very hot day. Mm. And I just thought I'd send a picture out of it. It was very nice. Really, I see. That's Do you want to know what I had for lunch? 
Um, well, I'm not that interested. Aren't you? But the listeners might be. Okay. So I think you should tell us. I had a Caesar salad to begin with. Caesar. Why is that funny? Well, well, what's in a Caesar salad? What's in a Caesar salad? Yeah. Not Caesar, that's for sure. No. Anchovies. Anchovies. Lettuce. You can't stand anchovies. You can't stand anchovies. It's bitter on your tongue. I'll tell you what I really hate is that yeah. some people now put chicken in a Caesar salad and call it a chicken Caesar salad. Yeah. Which is not a Caesar well, salad like at all. No, but you shouldn't put chicken in it. You should but, just so, anyway, come on. Look, what's in this Caesar salad? There's yeah. anchovies, there's a bit of egg, there's a bit of sort of dressing yeah, in it. Egg. I've um, never eaten an egg. Um, I know you've never eaten an egg. No. Well, mm. this is why This is why uh, mm. you wouldn't like it. Uh, but it's a beautiful salad. It was done well. And I like the place a Waldorf I was in, salad. Uh, Waldorf salad, yeah. Give me a Waldorf salad. Right, which I've never had, by the mm. way. But, right. a very, but a very nice Caesar salad with a bit mm. of shavings of Parmesan cheese. Right. Um, a very nice dressing. It was very good. And then for a main course, I had they had this amazing thing, mm. uh, which was a lobster and quail egg sandwich. Ooh. It was gorgeous. Sandwich? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, on a sort of... Uh, what sort of bread was it? Uh, it was on sort of what you might, I suppose, about sourdough bread. Sourdough. It was really nice, yeah, though. That sounds awful. It was really nice. Um, and we had a very nice bottle of wine. A nice bottle well. of wine. Now, the uh, gentleman you went to lunch with, of yes, course... whose is name a, shall not be mentioned. Is, uh, ...is a senior executive of a, a newspaper. He is, yeah. An evening newspaper, in fact. Well, well don't uh, identify him. He doesn't want to be identified. I'm not identifying him. I'm just stating the... the well, you've already said it's an evening newspaper. Well, there you go. And will have presumably gone off back to work. Now... He did. I've seen a report... In fact, I know the chap so well, because I worked with him for a number of yeah, years. Yeah, I know. Well, you don't and, have to identify him, And, uh, in fact, we used to have together, and sometimes... I'll tell you what he told me, actually, because yes. one of the guys that you've told some stories about yeah. on the radio station already, mm. who you said, don't worry about him, he's dead. Yes. Apparently he's not dead. Oh, really? Oh, he must have been a, <laughs> must have been a second coming so or something like careful. that. Yeah. But no, uh, this chap I'm talking about, who you saw today, he and I used to work on the same uh, yeah, news desk team. Don't give him identities hang on, away. Hang on, hang on, I was the boss, of course, and uh, we would sometimes go out and discuss critical issues yeah. about the running of the news mm. operation and have four bottles of wine over yeah. lunch. Um, Do you think that was wise? Well, m- maybe or maybe not. But anyway, the point is that it, 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 I'm now vindicated because mm. another report I've seen. I check on all these reports, you know, to I make know. sure I'm. I don't know where you find the life. time, to be honest. Um, this is another medical report you've got. Here, are, yeah, the medical report here says you can smoke, you can drink, you can eat as much as you like. Make sure you get seven hours of sleep a night to be at your best oh, in I the saw office. This earlier. I tweeted this yeah, earlier. Yeah. Uh, but researchers have discovered that the amount uh, workers smoke, eat or drink alcohol does not affect productivity. In particular, uh, alcohol intake does not affect the way... I presume they don't mean during the course of your... Yeah, but I presume they don't mean during the course of the working day. Well, they might do, No, I think they mean, like, the night before, don't they? Well, I don't know. I mean... um... I mean, I think most people would agree Mm -hmm. that if you go out for a four-hour lunch in the course of a a sort of nine-hour day, then you're going to be less productive, aren't you? Yeah, probably, probably. Now, you see, it says here that the the worst problems affecting employees and their concentration factor on work are financial concerns, Mm -hmm. uh, mental issues... Lack of sleep as well uh, is one, isn't it? Yeah, lack of sleep, mental issues, i.e., you know, problems we've got to sort out, and then something which I must admit I'm not uh, au fait with, muscular... Musculoskeletal problems. Musculoskeletal problems. Well, that means musculoskeletal problems. problems. Yeah, that means problems with your body, basically, isn't it? Musculoskeletal. You know, like mm. injuries, like to your muscles or bones. Okay, well, it probably means fatness, I suppose. Musculoskeletal. No, it doesn't mean fatness. Uh, also, it had means low problems with your bones or your muscles. Well, it says those who did not exercise also had problems. Those who felt bullied or were under unrealistic time pressures were also less productive, yeah. as were those with unpaid caring roles. Um, you know, which on which they're expected to do things uh, as favours. Yeah. But the one thing that doesn't affect them is uh, excess alcohol. Now, s- excess alcohol and smoking. And smoking, so yeah. So you can stop criticising me now, yeah. can't you? Well, no, I can't stop criticising you because... Not? Well, because it's uh, disgusting the way now, you get look, here's what it says three here. or four packets those, of cigarettes a day. That's rubbish. Those mm. who have six hours or less a night are yeah. significantly less productive than those who've got seven or eight. Now, you have six hours or less uh, during the course of a 24-hour cycle, don't you? I probably sleep about five hours in a 24-hour cycle. That's what I mean. Say. So that means I, you're going to be less productive. No, that's According rubbish. to this report. No. It does. Oh, I see. I see. So because I'm, you know, living a clean life, not drinking, but, you know, actually when applying did you, When did you stop drinking? No, I haven't had any drinks since uh, Sunday. You haven't because had a drink since Sunday? No, 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 I don't when we... You well, know, it's when only we're, Wednesday. When we're moving into a pat- working week. Well, I wouldn't be patting yourself on the back too. It's only Wednesday. Well, hang on. You're That's putting out pictures days. today. You're getting bladdered at lunchtime well, today. I didn't get bladdered. Let's, lunchtime yesterday. I didn't so get don't, don't give me all no. that, uh, I had all that a, garbage. I had two glasses of Prosecco and we shared a bottle of wine. Rubbish. So, How you much did a bottle of wine cost, by the way? How much? Yes. Why do you want to know? Because I want to know. What difference does it make? It makes. It was quite an expensive restaurant. We had a bottle of Cloudy Bay, which is not cheap, OK? Cloudy Bay. How much was the Cloudy Bay? £67. Pounds. 
I, you see, that is outrageous. Why? And you accuse me of being uh, extravagant and wasting no, I money. Don't. No, you I spent don't. £67 on a bottle of wine for two. No, we split it. In the restaurant. That's what I mean. Yeah. So you had, like, one large glass each and then half a large glass each, 67 quid. Well, no, it was a outrageous. bottle of wine. We probably had about three glasses each. Uh, utterly outrageous. Why is that outrageous? Well, it's a ridiculous amount of money to pay for a, a glass of wine. Well, I don't think so. Of course it is. It's a very good bottle of wine. I think it's disgraceful. I mean, not everybody wants to drink the cheap uh, plonk that you drink. I don't gym, uh, d- uh, drink cheap. Plonk. Well, how and much I, would you pay for a, a bottle of wine in a restaurant? Uh, well, I mean, on, you wouldn't go to a restaurant like this in no, the first place. No, on Sunday, I remember... I mean, a Toby Carvery house <sighs> white is probably a little bit cheaper, I would give him. No, no, on you Sunday, know. I was in a very nice uh, restaurant, Were actually, you? in Portsmouth. All right. And it's also a brewery. Is you it? Know, it's one of those... Oh, like a microbrewery. Microbrewery, right. absolutely Are right. you going to take me there at the weekend? Maybe, maybe. Produces its own um, beers and all that, yeah. and, and it does a fantastic um, Sunday roast, yeah. OK? That's all it does on uh-huh. a Sunday. You can either have roast pork, yeah. roast chicken, and what did you or, have? or roast beef. I had the sirloin, roast beef. Roast right? beef, OK, yeah. very nice. And I had... Yorkshire pudding. And Yorkshire pudding, Mushy yeah, yeah. peas. No, um, green beans uh-huh. and carrots. OK. Yeah, but it was very nice. Very good. Oh, and, um, sorry, and... Uh, Red cabbage. So you would have had a nice bottle of red with that, presumably. No, I didn't. I had a white, because I prefer white. Yeah, we should have red with roast beef. Well, anyway, I had a white, and it was £27. And what I was it? was very reasonable. It was Pinot Grigio. Yeah, you see, but that's the thing. Yeah. That's the stuff, sort of stuff you can buy for a fiver, and no. they ramp it up and sell it for 27 no, 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 It's no. actually much no, no. worse no, no. than spending 67 no, on a bottle no, of cloudy it was a very sophisticated Pinot Grigio, believe was it? me. Now, um, what were you having lunch with? Oh, you know, just people. People. I was. I was. But random people. I was promoting our forthcoming show. Okay. So I was with important people. Of okay? course. Yeah. Sort of people are offering a bit of sponsorship and all this kind oh, of good. stuff. Oh, you know good. Dazza I mean? says it. Hey, well, yeah. if you get a bit of sponsorship, you can yeah. start drinking some cloudy bay, can't you? Uh, yeah. Uh, Phil Lynott well, was born in Sally Oak in Birmingham. It says. Yes, I know, but he was Irish. He was Irish. Wasn't yeah, of course. His mother was, was yeah. Irish. Yeah. yeah, his mother was Irish. Lived in uh, Dublin, didn't he? Uh, lived in Dublin. The the opening riff to that was fantastic, yeah. wasn't it? All yeah, that right. kind of stuff, you so know? now you do and guitar impersonations yes, as well right. as yeah, everything yeah. else. Yeah, and also remember the opening lines. You know, I first came across some guy with his money. I brought out my rapier and then my gun or something. Something like it? that. It was kind it? of yeah. high women's song. Yeah, high women's song. Yeah. yeah, but it was it was great song. Yeah. I, I totally sounded agree. better when they did it. To be honest. Yeah, well, of course it did. By the way, do you know Phil Linnett was married to mm. the daughter of Leslie? What was his Leslie name? Leslie Crowther. Leslie Crowther. That's right. Leslie the Crowther. Crackerjack man. The crackerjack man. Yeah. And he was a lovely man, Leslie Crowther. Yeah. And uh, I once went to a, a, a TV a filming of Crackerjack. They used to do it in St John's Wood. How old were you? Um, I don't know, I was under 10. Right, really? Yeah. I see. And Leslie Crowther was there, was he? Yeah, well, he was the compere of the show. Well, that was excellent. Good for you. It's five o'clock, it's Cracker Jack. It's five o'clock, it's Cracker Jack. Yeah. And, and of course... In our uh, case, it's four his, o'clock, it's not Cracker Jack. And his daughter was a, a signal beauty. Mm. And she, um, you know, she married Phil Lynott. And then guess what Phil Lynott did? He joined the 27 Club. Oh, yeah, I know. That was very sad. People who die at 27. Yeah, well, that's Overdose, a nice way of putting it. Now, mm. you know we haven't had time to discuss something which is quite close to your heart, oh, I'm yeah? sure, but What's I think that? we maybe discuss it tomorrow night. You see that story from Denmark about the Danish uh, uh, radio guy who killed a rabbit live on air? That was terrible, disgusting. And then not only killed it, took it home mm. and cooked it and ate it with his children. Yeah. What did he do that for? Well, we'll tell you about that tomorrow. Because it's a terrible story, but it's, uh, I think it's something that we need to discuss. Thank you very much, Mr Parry. Uh, coming up tomorrow uh, on the two mics, it'll be Porky Vision, of course, and uh, Mr Parry will be telling you all about the shows that you should be watching uh, and maybe some of the ones that you shouldn't have been watching. And uh, coming up on Thursday, uh, we'll have the Porky Quiz, and it's either going to be about Portsmouth or it's going to be about Nathan history or something like that but we'll tell you tomorrow uh, and we'll send the, uh, the questions over to the independent quiz master don't forget to come back tomorrow for another sparkling as fizzy as a bottle of champagne podcast from the two mics glorious gainers point of the story is mm, mm. I can't believe you've just made me say that right go on go on I cannot yeah. believe I've just said the point well, of the sorry, story I'm is we've been working with you no. now for nearly yeah. a year yeah. and yeah. I've started saying the point of well, the story, story is, is. Oh, God kill me now <laughs>